what what is up randy davidson we are live on fireside chats with big chief burrito our guest tonight you know him as randy gd davidson local tv indie film icon you can't watch a movie without seeing randy come across the screen he's been doing it forever He's depressed about no Boise State football this year, but we are but we are here to talk about all things related to filmmaking, art, sports, whatever Randy wants to talk today about. Um, thank you, everybody who's tuned in so far. Please, if you are watching this live, even if you plan to go and watch some football, <laughs> uh, leave a like on the stream if you can, leave a heart, leave a comment, leave a question for Randy. That will help us us immensely. It'll help the algorithm, whatnot. We are also live on Twitch, Twitch TV slash 2AM Burrito. Also on YouTube, Twitch. No, no. Well, YouTube is not Twitch, but uh, uh, YouTube.com slash 2AM Burrito, Twitch.tv slash 2AM Burrito, and of course, Facebook.com slash 2AM Burrito. Randy, how you doing today, man? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing, buddy? Good, good. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. We didn't officially start yet. Mm. We are we are live, but I need a I need to hit I need to hit this real quick. <laughs> Randy Davis, how you doing, today, man? I'm good. I'm wearing I'm wearing my Boise State blue in honor of of Boise not playing the blue turf. Same colors. Oh as what is the deal with college football? I mean, they just had like no idea what they were doing this year, right? They were like, yeah. "We're going to play. We're not going to play." There aren't like aren't like half the teams playing like Alabama's? They got to play because they there's so much money in it, but. Right. I like how I like how they, they try to make it seem like it's about the athletes when, you know, 90 percent of the school revenue is coming from football. And they're like, no, it's about the players. We want to give them a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's all money. Uh, Randy, uh, uh, I do want to start off with a little example of your work, um, just so people are, are watching that aren't familiar with Mr. Davison's chops and as much as an actor we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play your reel right now right oh geez okay well have a look under that hood see what's abreast <laughs> that of course was a joke oh, oh, oh. that should do it give it some gas <laughs> You are a lifesaver. That's no problem. I do curls. <laughs> See, my mom has five pounders in the basement. <clears throat> do you do yoga? Sometimes. I I'm really good at downward dog. Well, maybe you could help me with my upward snake. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was inappropriate, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm going to go to this midnight special. I'm going to cover in big size. Say dick size? Yes, I wear a dick size. Are you trying to say disguise? That's what I say. It's lucky. It's disguise, man. Yes, dick size. Disguise. Look, dick size. Look at yeah. my lips when I'm saying dick skies. Dick skies. What is wrong with you? All right, you're bringing me down. I'm not going down like that. You frustrate me. I'm frustrating you. You can't be out here just saying the wrong words like that, man. It means a whole different thing. Look, disguise. No, 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 no. My tongue doesn't do that. It's not doing what you're just doing. Dis guys. <laughs> this is great. These guys are terrible. Oh, well, say hobos. N nobody says hobos anymore. They don't? No. Oh. Dante, you're really dating yourself. Well, I look good for 29. You got it, man. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this looks like it has prosciutto. I love prosciutto. Oh, such flavor. <laughs> is that prosciutto, Donna? Why don't you just pop it in your hole and see, George? <laughs> Uh, yes, it is, uh, and they all have it. Mmm, mm, mm, spectacular. <laughs> These are something. Mm. Oh, now don't speak with your mouth, Bozzy. Nom, nom, nom. I'll get it. <laughs> we be partners, you 50, me 80. 50, 80? Yeah, because we make more money, more money, more money. No, 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 okay, just stop. Just do two. Oh, no, 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 that's two ninety ninety, bro. You need to get something new. It's no good? No, that guy gotta go, bro. Hey, hey. Like Fonzie. 
That's okay, sweetie. You don't have to say you're sorry. Me? Mm -hmm. You're the one that started this whole mess. What? Oh, this isn't over. Not by a long shot. Why am I leaving? This is my salon. You know what? I'm leaving anyway. You know how much I love freedom. Well, you know where there's too much freedom? In the virtual world. You can go anywhere, and you don't need papers or a visa. Get out of the goddamn shed! You know what scares the Chuck Dickens out of me? Aliens. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out a lot of people that I've worked with on that reel, Carol, uh, Caroline, um, Esquire, uh, Tony Cox, a bunch yeah. of people in there. I do um, I, I do uh, a reel review videos. I think I told you about it. And uh, I guess this cancels, this cancels my ability to do yours in real time because uh, we watched it here live. But well, how... I, I, Boy, is it a splat on the splatter meter? <laughs> no, I mean it's a it's a it's a good comedic reel. How how many reels have you had like throughout your career, like official reels? No, oh, several, I guess. Um, I do, I do it myself. I need to pay and have it done professionally. I know. Um, once the uh, couple of projects I got coming out uh, at the end of this year, I'm definitely gonna pay to have those done professionally because I don't I don't want to mess with it anymore this point when you get on a like a larger than sort of a local level because i mean at the indie like local film level it's basically you're calling the director or the editor directly and saying hey can i get that can i get that footage but when you ask for footage for like a like a national tv show or a film what's the process like for that uh it's 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 um there is no process it's no so, uh, yeah uh, there's there's methods that uh, friends friends of mine have that they can uh, uh, download certain TV shows or, or movies for me. Or if it comes down to it, I end up buying it. If, if it's a bigger movie, I get it. Um, but all the bigger things that I've done have been, uh, shall we say, uh, <laughs> downloaded. Procured? Yeah, procured in ways that probably the, the, the film industry isn't. Uh, Shout out, shout out derpy.com and 4K video downloader. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you're telling me that for, <laughs> but other people have done it for me, so I don't know where it came from. So you're telling me you didn't text David Fincher and was like, hey man, I need my, uh, I need that Oldman scene yeah, from right. real. Yeah, 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 we're tight. I got him right here in speed dial. <laughs> you got it, you got him in the text, huh? Yeah, um, I do that on my Facebook. I don't know if it's the real him, but he accepted. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> David Fincher accepted you on Facebook. Hey, that's an accomplishment. Yeah. yeah. What do you say to people that say you're the single reason that uh, Mine Hunter season three was postponed? <laughs> uh, I tell him to f off, man. Uh, this is Fincher's dad's movie that he's doing. His dad wrote it back in '97, uh, which I love. Mine Hunter, by the way. That's uh, I think it's just on hold for a while but I, I think it's going to come back. Uh, but David Fincher's dad wrote this movie way back in the nineties. And to be a part of it, I'm super like beyond excited because it's a passion project. Mm -hmm. I guess it was going to do, it's called Mank. If you guys don't know uh, about the making of Citizen Kane. And originally he wanted to do it back in 97. It was going to be a second movie after the game. And uh, nobody wanted to shoot it in black and white. And he, that's what he wanted. He wasn't going to do it without Kevin Spacey. He was supposed to play Mank, and we all know how that kind of turned out for Spacey. He would have been playing it if uh, things didn't go south for him, but or uh, I guess he made things go south for himself. But, uh, yeah, so it's a passion project, I guess, for, for Fincher. So it's he's going to do it no matter what. For people not familiar, uh, David Fincher, obviously, he's making a movie called Mank, and it's about the guy who wrote the first draft of Citizen Kane. 
basically he was like a like a, a alcoholic right uh, or a, a yeah. kind of a, a, an alcoholic a guy that was kind of a recluse and he basically went into hiding for like a few months right yeah and I, isolation and just cranked out a 200 page uh script for citizen king that was then adapted but this is the story of, of that particular part uh and you and you and you get a and you get a scene in there with uh with a pretty with, with a pretty big name actor oh my god uh it's a dream come true i'm gonna send you a picture uh okay. this will be like a 2 a.m burrito exclusive no one's seen this picture yet okay um, since they've released pictures i think i could probably put it out there um turn on my phone real quick but as i'm doing this yeah i had a scene with uh gary oldman mm. you know, all-time favorite actors uh when i met him it was i mean i was just like fanboy mr oldman i just have to tell you it's a dream come true to work with you uh you're, you're one of my favorite actors of all time and uh, it's just a dream he put his arm around me i thought he was going to be real standoffish like daniel Lee Lewis, you know on like where you got to call him mr president or carry him upstairs in a wheelchair what, what's this a cell phone i don't yeah. understand this yeah uh, <laughs> So, so yeah, he's like, puts his arm around me. He's like, oh, that means so much to me. Thank you. He's like, British accent. And uh, and I said, I, I know we're not supposed to do this. Uh, we're not, I know we're not supposed to take pictures on the set because it's real secretive. But before this is over, I'd love, love to get, like, a picture of me and you together. Uh, send my parents back home. And he said, well, you know, they don't want the costumes to get out. So, um, uh, you know, uh do you have your phone with you? I was like, I do. He's like, well, let's do a selfie right now. So I'm like, that's, that's the picture I'm going to send you. I was, oh my God, I was so stoked. Uh, All right. I look like a goof in the picture because I'm just like, <laughs> but it was, it was awesome, dude. It was, it was insane. While you look for that, I'm going to just uh, catch up on a couple of comments that people have been least living. Uh, Ken Erstad uh, gives us a, What's up, Ken? Thanks for watching. Hope you and Steve are watching. We're going to talk about insecurity a little later on. Dizzy says, not watching football tonight. Uh, well, I didn't start Deshaun Watson, Dizzy, so I don't, I don't, I'm just kidding. I have Pat Mahone going. I appreciate you guys watching. Even if you got football on in the background, go ahead and leave one of your tablets or one of your phones on the stream. Hero Team Ken is also watching. He says, Randy. What's up, Ken? What's up, Ken? Uh, we also got Rudy Quintanilla saying, hey, Randy, love your work. Thank you for hey, watching, Rudy. Work. And then uh, we also got Dimitri Green, two big dogs in SD coming together, dope AF. What's up, Dimitri? Flex on them, Dimitri. Thank you for watching. Um, but you're, you know, like, obviously, I don't think I could talk for, like, the first five minutes if I was in the room for Gary Oldman because I'd just be like, what am I going to ask him about first? You know what I mean? Like you, you had a brief time to be on set with you, with him. What was, you know, did other than just fanboying and, and, and saying, um, and, and, and just kind of telling them how, what he meant to you as an actor, what was the, um, what was the interaction like with him? Because I've talked to actors, like I talked to Merrick, I talked to David Fernandez, Jose Yenke, and I always kind of ask them when they step into the arena with an established actor, um, if they give them a lot of feedback, if, if they, if the, you know, are they easy to work with? How was your experience actually working with them? Oh man, it was, it was like a masterclass just watching him. Uh, I, like I said, I expected the Daniel Day Lewis thing where when I meet him, it's like, am I going to meet Mank or am I going to meet Gary Oldman? Uh, but he was very personal, very, very, uh, friendly, very personable, uh, this is not not what I expected like, in between scenes, but Fincher does like 30 takes. So it's a lot of people say, God, doesn't that stifle you as an actor and make it feel mechanical? But that's kind of the opposite. Like you, it becomes so organic after you do it so many times. Like, because uh, there, there's one point I go, uh, ah, Mr. Mankiewicz, uh, you, have, you have a phone call in the lobby, right? So, uh, and the, the continuity person comes over and she's like, just super, like, uh, just, just so you know, you went like this. You want me to say, oh, I'm just gonna make uh, You need to do that every time, like, because yeah, I already know how May, I, I know how venture works. So I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. So you would think that it would be me mechanical, um, mm -hmm. but it becomes very organic after you do it so many times. But uh, like I said, Gary Oldman, I thought he would be like super method, and in between each thing, in between each scene, you know, you couldn't talk to him. 
you come over in, in between scenes. I have a desk and play in the maitre d' of the Trocadero, this old club, Hollywood club in the, the 1930s. He comes over. There's a black phone on my desk. He picks up the black phone. He's like, he goes, uh, uh, this is Commissioner Gordon. Get me Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I start laughing. I'm like, uh, you just blew my mind. You, you just made my day. He's like, oh, you like that. I couldn't even. He'll still he'll be in his British accent in between scenes, like, and then he goes, yeah. yeah so he's like mid Atlantic, like. Granted, the scene he was doing was real lighthearted, so he did, there wasn't a lot of like heavy emotion. And I talked to the AD about it. I go, yeah, I was, I was wondering if old man, you know, would be super method, but he's he's kind of a goof in between scenes. Hey, uh, I mean, it wasn't goofing off, but I mean, you know, a little little uh, joke here and there, and back into it. Um, but he goes, yeah, on the, on the days where Gary's, uh, you know, some serious is going on, he's uh, he's in the zone, and you know, not to talk to him. Like he's he goes in the corner and he does his thing, but that oh, was amazing. It was so amazing. I saw him argue with Fincher about a scene that was that was crazy. Um, oh, yeah. God. I, I, ever since you sent me that picture, I haven't been able to. I haven't been able to stop smiling. I don't know if people can see it, but there it is. Oh, yeah. That's you. That's you and Gary Oldman right there. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, think is, I, I think I might have said some of my lines, didn't I? <laughs> so he picks up the bat phone. He says, Commissioner Gordon, he's arguing with David Fincher. Obviously, these are two icons in the film world, and you're just sitting there like, what? Like, uh. Yeah, there was a scene Gary was doing. He was like, oh, this is just, he's like, David, this does, doesn't ring true to me. And I, uh, I can't really describe the scene, but there was something they were disagreeing on. He was like, well, uh, Fincher's like, just go with it, Gary. It's going to work. Uh, I, I plan it all out. Gary's like, ah, oh, he's like, fuck, oh, David, I, I just don't. I just don't get it. It just doesn't ring true for me. And he's like, just trust me. You know, we get, and David gave him reasons. You know, we have ADR. There's things that'll make it work. He's like, all right, it's your fucking movie. Like, it was like, oh my God. Like, I, 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 I think that there's a, a familial relationship between them. I, I think, uh, I want to say that Gary Oldman was married to, to David Fitcher's wife. So it's like a weird, dysfunctional kind of family, but they they know each other. Their kids know each other. And there's like kind of a, a brotherly bond, I guess, between the two guys, so they can talk to each other like that. But it was, it was pretty awesome. I can picture this is what I picture, uh, Randy. I yeah. picture uh, them arguing, and then, um, and then uh, I'm gonna be standing there like. No, no, I picture them arguing, and it's David Fincher's like, "I'm David fucking Fincher," <laughs> and then Gary Oldman's like, "I'm Gary fucking Oldman," and then you step up and you say, "Well, I'm Randy Goddamn yeah, Davidson." Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so. <laughs> So why don't you guys let me get in the mix over here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I kept my mouth shut. I was like the I was like the child at the kids' table at uh, <laughs> at Thanksgiving. And I'm working with Master, so I just I just want to go in and do a good job and be seen yeah. and not heard. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I told you earlier that what uh, what what I usually do on on the stream is I do two separate. Uh, well, not I do I do a bracket bit uh, where I make the actor guess give me a yes or no or a pick one of two answers uh to for a little bracket for you mm -hmm. i ha i couldn't i i, I had two ideas and I'm, i decided i'm gonna do them both so we're gonna do an early bracket bit today okay. so this is gonna be gary oldman rolls oh so i'm gonna give you two gary oldman rolls mm. and you tell me which one moves on to the next round okay all right, you ready? Yep. All right. Serious Black, Harry Potter movies. Okay. Or Commissioner Gordon. Oh, I have to go with Commissioner Gordon because I had that Commissioner Gordon moment. Uh, yeah, okay. Drexel Spillwell. Drexel Spillwell, already. <laughs> or, well, the other one was Dracula from Bram Stoker's. Drexel. I mean, I, Dracula's brilliant. And I know Drexel's only like one scene, but that, yeah. that's one of the most brilliant performances of all freaking time right there. There's been titties on that screen for the last five minutes. You haven't even looked at them. Um, <laughs> all right. Sid Vicious from Sid and Nancy. Or Albert Milo in one of my favorite movies, Basquiat. It's a small role, but he's in there. Uh, Sid Vicious. Sid Vicious. Yeah. Moving on to the next round. All right. This is another one here. Beethoven mm. or Winston Churchill, Darkest Winston, Hour. Winston Churchill, he won the Oscar. He won an Oscar for that. It's kind of hard to, to fight against that one. There's, right. there's some Oscar buzz already for this, and they haven't even been seen yet. So, 
fingers crossed for. And I didn't know the name of this next character, but you know his famous line is "Bring me everyone." Oh yeah. Underrated line when he when he says "Bingo." Uh, Norman Sta uh, Norman Stansfield from The Professional or Mason Verger from Hannibal. Oh, it's got to be professional. It's got to be Norman Stansfield, right? Got to be. Yeah. All right. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald from JFK. Would just like him too. Or Zorg from The Fifth Element. Zorg mm. here. Uh, that's iconic. You know he hated that role. It was he did it as a favor. He hates he it. When you talk about it. Um, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Lee Harvey because he hates it. Because he yeah, he hates Zorg. So go with Lee Harvey. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rosencrantz from Rosencrantz and Gillenstern are dead, or Jack Graham from Romeo is Bleeding? Uh, Rosencrantz. Rosencrantz. Yeah. All right. And Jackie Flaherty or oh. his character from uh, State of Grace? Uh, which one? State of Grace. Between between that and which? And, and Jackie Flaherty. Is that oh, the wait. same movie? Oh, wait. Uh, so, so it's but you already said Rosencrantz was the last one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is Jackie oh, Flannery. Ah, uh, that's a tough one. I'm gonna say Jackie Flannery. All right, that's, that's gotcha. iconic. All right, and then we're moving on to the second round. We got Drexel versus Commissioner Gordon. Mm. Ah, God. I mean, I, 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 I got that Commissioner Gordon moment, but I got, I gotta say Drexel. That's one of my favorite, probably my favorite all-time Gary Oldman role. Sid Vicious versus Winston Churchill. God. Oh, that's tough. He's on. He's amazing in both. Yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, I gotta give him Churchill. All right. Yeah. You won an Oscar, right? Yeah. And then on the other side, we have Norman Stansfield from The Professional versus Lee Harvey Oswald. Stansfield. Stansfield. And then we have uh, Jackie Flaherty versus Rosencrantz. Uh, Jackie. All right, and now we have the final four: Drexel Spivey versus Winston Churchill. Uh, gotta gotta go with Drexel. It's my favorite. I, I'm, I, I hate to take the Oscar. Hey, 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 doesn't matter. Hey, Norman Stanfield or Jackie Flaherty. Oh God, dang! Those are both amazing performances. Jackie Stanfield, it's got to be. So you 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 gave me what you gave me the first name from one oh, and the last name from the other right. one. Yes, yes. What's his first Norman, name? In, uh, Norman Norman oh, Stanfield. Yeah, well, that's right. The All right, and then Norman Stanfield or Drex Drexel Drexel Spivey. Yeah. I mean, uh, hey hey Drexel Spivey or uh, yeah, that's you know what I just love I love that performance and it's only like a two minute scene. But the no, uh, yeah. that's probably my second favorite. Uh, you know. You don't know how you know how difficult it was for me to like write these different parts out and just be like, "Damn, I'm looking at this paper like." I know how do you yeah. choose, right? That yeah. is a that is a lot of fucking iconic roles. Yeah. I mean, uh, Winston Churchill. I mean, just the fact that he's playing Winston Churchill and Lee Harvey Oswald. Right. That, I mean, that guy disappears in every role. He's Daniel Day Lewis is the same, but but. Uh... But, let, but uh, Goldman is less pretentious. <laughs> is, that, is Daniel Day Lewis still on the best actor alive list, even though he's retired? Um, on my list, I, he's on my list, but um, yeah. I, I think I think he is. I, I would imagine. Who's in your top five? Oh, uh, probably. Let's see. We got Oldman, Daniel Day Lewis. Uh, uh, I love Tom Hardy. That guy's he's gonna he's gonna do a lot of amazing things. He's still he's still green, but um uh Tom Hardy, uh De Niro, gotta go with old, old school De Niro. Um uh God dang. Paul Newman. Paul Newman, eh? Yeah, Pacino. That's like six, you give me you're going, yeah, going long here. Maybe right? too hard. <laughs> right. Um, I, I gotta put I, I gotta put Jeffrey Wright in there and like John Leguizamo, oh, yeah. and just because I gotta throw a little. And I, you know, who I like recently is um, this, uh, oh my god, I'll, I'll remember the name later. We got another comment here from uh, Julie D. Uh, Proud of my hubby, he's so talented and can't wait to see him on the screen. Uh, thanks, Snoopy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Snoopy says hi. Um, but Randy, um, obviously, we're starting off at the point where you get to act with one of the most iconic, you know, actors, you know, of the last 50 years, one of my favorite actors of all time, somebody that's been in incredible life. Let's let's back it up to 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 the start of your journey there. I always ask actors if 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 there was a particular time and place in their life where they caught the acting bug or there was something that made them realize that that was something that they wanted to do. Usually it's some sort of reaction they get from a play they were in when they were a kid or something that they see on screen when did it start for you uh when it really started i think when it was in the third grade i mean it probably started way back when my parents used to take me to the drive-in every weekend um, i even i think I, I won an award at one of the film festivals and i said you know i want to dedicate this to my, my family i actually uh uh i don't want to talk sad stuff, but like uh, San Diego Film Awards, I, I won Best Supporting Actor for a, a role I did, and my mom was fighting cancer and lost her two weeks later, but I was able to give the speech. But I said, I want to thank my you know, my mom and dad for taking me to the drive-in when I was a kid, uh, for giving me my love of movies. Uh, my my dad at one point told me, yeah, we never, we didn't do that to give you a cultural experience. We did it to uh, save money on the weekends. It was just something cheap to do. We didn't even care what was playing. So. Either way, I thank them for doing that. But I think what the, the moment where I wanted to do it, there's actually two I can remember. Uh, third grade, uh, this a touring company uh, came to my school, and it was little kid actors. They were they were local. They used local actors in, in Idaho, uh, and they did the Jungle Book. And this kid that I played Little League with was playing through the Bear, and I was super pissed and jealous. I'm like, ah, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to play Blue the Bear. Uh, so I, I remember that moment. The guy, the guy's name was Burke. He was a catcher, so he was like a big burly guy. It was like, uh, so I'd never play blue in in my lifetime, probably I guess. But uh, <laughs> I was super jealous. Um, and then in seventh grade, uh, Shakespearean, this uh, two man company, came to my junior high, and they did a, a two man show of like uh, just condensed versions of all these Shakespeare plays. And I saw that. I'm like, I want to do that. That's that's what I want to do. And I did a lot of Shakespeare in uh, college. And after that, I worked for some Shakespeare festivals. So not just Shakespeare, but I wanted to be on stage. I wanted to act. I wanted to do films. I wanted to do all of it. You do uh, Summerfest? Or? Oh, yeah. I did uh, I did the Idaho Shakespeare Festival. Uh, I did uh, Ashland. Uh, I was like an intern at Ashland uh, one year. And uh, I did the uh, uh, Maine Shakespeare Festival. What were what 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 roles were you playing here? Oh God, I played uh, Demetrius in uh, which one was that? Um, I don't know, my, my, my mom did Summer Night's Dream. Uh, I did Antonio in The Tempest. I did uh, John Rugby in The Merry Wives of Windsor. Uh, Tempest and Midsummer Night Dreams are like uh, summer stock and oh, yeah. staples. Yeah, yeah, always. I did. Uh, uh, let's see. God, there's so many. Uh, so and this was this was high school. This is after high school. After high school, this was college. Um, I did do Tame of the Shrew in high school. Okay. Uh, God, so many. Um, let's see what else. Uh, uh, two Two Gentlemen of Verona. Uh, it was Valen, Valen, Valentine. I think in that one. Do you um, Do you think you could step on? Do you think uh, you could step on like? Uh, touring Shakespeare company and just kind of pick up that, 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 you know, that pacing that again, or do you think it's, it's all out of your system then? Uh, I, th I think I could do it. I did uh, about two years ago. I did uh, uh, Medea, uh, which it's not Shakespearean, but it's classical theater. I think I could pick it up. I've just gotten so used to doing film where it's very low key and you keep it so intimate that I would have to retrain myself to project and, and to convey those emotions with, with my voice. Yeah, I would, I'd love to do another Shakespeare play. What, uh, what happened? What came after? What came after Shakespeare? Uh, so I, let's see, I did the Atlantic theater company at NYU. I went and studied with them, which was more, more, more along the lines of film. Um, a little bit of theater. I mean, it was, it was a good mix. Uh, and then I studied with the Stella Adler, moved to LA, uh, dove right in and, uh, studied with them for a while and then I've continued to study with different teachers here and there. Um, 
Yeah, so that's, that's kind of the background. Did some stuff with the ground lanes. Uh, Stan Wells was uh, my improv teacher in LA uh, for a couple of years. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've so many classes through the years, voiceover, uh, acting, improv. So you you basically you, you you caught the bug early. Your parents take you to the drive drive in. Yep. You know you you get that sort of experience, and then right in right in you you jump and you were taking. I'm assuming you were taking like maybe like drama or something in high school and stuff like that, but not necessarily diving full in. And then in college, you just go. Full. Yeah, yeah, that was my that was my major at Boise State. Um, I uh, actually was. Uh, it was kind of kind of cool. Like last week when I posted the, the first pictures from Bank that Netflix released, uh, my uh, well, my drama professors from college commented and he was really excited to see it. And was asking me about you know what role I was playing. So that that felt good. It was like that moment where I'm like I would be here if it wasn't for you. You know so that, that was pretty cool. Uh, when my high school drama teacher chimes in, Mr. C, that's cool. Uh, it means a lot to me. You know, so that's cool. kind of when I impressed them and show them that I've gone gone further with what they taught me. No, I mean when I think drama, I think Boise State. That's pretty yeah. much goes goes hand, goes hand in hand. Yeah, got a good. There's a good theater pro, uh, program there. It's, no, you'd be you'd be surprised. The the good theater programs are, uh, you know, I mean, you know, if any school that takes the time to put a, a dramatic arts or theater program. Yeah, we got Aaron Paul for God's sake. That's a good that's a good actor. I mean, the Aaron Paul comes from the Boise State acting department. Look at you. Oh, he's from Boise. I don't know if he went, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, eggs and bacon. Mr. Egbert asks, "What forty-eight team on are you on this year?" That's the that's a unique way of asking somebody that wow. so far. Uh, no one, no one asked this year. Oh, nobody. Uh oh, uh oh. Start the influx of inbox messages Whoa. into Randy's. Into Randy's. Hey, Randy. I don't, I don't work without pay this time, though. No, it's, uh, nah, it's, nah, it's too dangerous out there. <laughs> Um, speaking of like being on set, you told me that you've gone to a couple of auditions and you've worked on a couple of commercials. Uh, how drastically different are the post COVID sets in your opinion or from what your experience is? Uh, it's crazy. Um, it's, uh, I, in the past I loved, you know, craft service, that's no longer a thing or you can go and grab whatever you want. It's prepackaged now, sanitizer everywhere. They check your temperature. You got to take a rapid COVID test. Uh, really work. Um, got another gig coming up here in, excuse me, a couple weeks, and I uh, got to do the rapid COVID test for that. Was a little worried about that. I thought I was going to j- like jab the thing way up in my brain, like you know, not as bad as everyone says it is. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a little brain poke. Nothing yeah, to worry about. A little brain poke. Uh, yeah, other 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 times, like I, I haven't had to do that on every step. Uh, a lot of times they, you know, they'll they'll test your temperature with that electronic temperature gauge, and then uh, you, you can it's, There's all kinds of weird protocols. Like you, you can't walk in the front door like you usually do. They're like, okay, once you get your temperature taken, you got to go around the back and go through that bay the bay doors. You got to fill out paperwork. Like, have I left the country? Have I, you know, have I had any fevers? Have I had any coughs? You got to fill out this uh, questionnaire every time you work. So it's it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I do like that a lot of my auditions now. I don't have to drive back and forth to LA because I, I mean I love San Diego. So, but it, it, here, it's if if you if you go on, let's say you're on you're on set for for a five day shoot, right? Day mm-hmm. one, you come in, you test, you're good. You come in, you work. Day two, you come in, you're all good. You're fine. You test, you're good. Mm-hmm. Day three, you walk in, your temperature is like half a degree past the limit. Yeah, is that know. and and you're the primary actor? Is that whole day canceled? It would have to be. It would have to be. That's crazy. I'm sure stuff like that's going on. Uh, and do they? And uh, another question here from uh, from Eggs and Bacon. How much do they pay you to go get tested? Is that part of like your compensation? Is that just you know entry into the game? Um, so it's it's like uh, the rapid test is like 160 bucks, but they they reimburse you. Yeah. Oh, they okay. So you go get the test, you pay for it, and then they reimburse you. Sometimes, sometimes they do it there, and it's like a 15 minute thing. So they just have they have the technology. Yeah, like getting it before seems doesn't seem very uh, wise. Yeah, I got tested two weeks ago, dog. I'm good. Peace out. I mean, they're doing it like two, three days before, but um, that that doesn't seem that safe to me. I, I mean, I could the next day end up getting COVID. So. Yeah, 
that the, the whole two weeks thing is like, okay, you 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 were good news is you're negative two weeks yeah. ago. Now what the fuck you've done in the last two weeks, I don't know. Yeah. But but two weeks ago you were good. Exactly. Yeah. It's great. Um from what I've been talking to producers uh, that have been on sets for music videos and stuff like that, they're saying it's adding maybe 15 to 20 percent to their budget. But they're also saying that basically the people that have to take care of themselves the least are actors. Um, there's no touch ups. There's no last looks. So, yeah. you know, and they, they give you these sort of self self. Have you had to do the self makeup, the self touch ups on set? I have, yeah. I've, I've done some uh, some sheets with Medcom. It's a, a medical company. They train doctors and nurses. I've, I've, they, they're they making you come makeup ready. So, uh, like, dudes, learn to do your makeup <laughs> if you don't already. I mean, it's, I, I want to talk to a makeup artist because I would assume that for their, for their kit fees, if everything they have to use is single use, it's going to probably drive their cost up a lot, right? Or do you can you get at least initial makeup from, from, from an MUA? Uh, the, the, the times that I've had it, uh, it's been, they've airbrushed. It's like a, uh, non-touch kind of thing they've been doing. Um, yeah, that's crazy. I had a haircut, uh, one of the times and that, that was, um, a little worried. Non-touch? Uh, no, that, that was, that was touch, but it was, uh, uber sanitary. I mean, we're wearing masks and literally, I mean, she's dipping in alcohol every time she's doing stuff. Um, it was just a scissor cut. Uh, scissor cut and then uh, disposable razor. Um, they didn't use the other clippers. Um, so yeah, it's it's, uh, it's a different world for sure. I thought they were going to use that 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 vacuum with the uh, with the clippers <laughs> yeah. inside that they could just kind of go over it a few times and be like, "You're good to go." Uh, I gotta say, I tried uh, I tried cutting my hair one of the one time during uh, quarantine, and I uh, had a big uh, notch back to the back of my head. It was pretty awful. So I'm glad I've been. Stuck at home and no one can see that for a while. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta give yourself the corona the corona fades. The corona cut, yeah. The, 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 the corona cuts, <laughs> but the um, the Fincher film this was pre pre COVID, right? When did when did you actually shoot that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty started off to be a great year, and in January I did uh, uh, the Fincher film in uh, January at the middle of January. Thank God they wrapped, I guess they wrapped sometime in February. I was worried. There was no talk. It's like, ah, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna come out. And then I did in, in February, I did the uh, United States versus Billy holiday with Lee Daniels. And that's, uh, I guess uh, they'd already wrapped uh, primary filming in Canada. Uh, and the scene that I did was an added scene that they added. Uh, and I guess after my scene was done at the end of February, that, uh, that wrapped. And then a week later, I did a, a TV movie called Blood on Her Badge, uh, which I don't even know. If, I don't think they finished that one. It's a, it's a, a BET movie of the week kind of deal. So um, with uh, Raven Simone was in that one. Um, so yeah, it was, I was off to, a, I was rocking and rolling in the beginning of 2020. And then, and then it just turned into a shit storm after that. <laughs> So I mean, if you if 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 that uh, Fincher film had been a little bit later, you wouldn't have been able to get that selfie with Gary Oldman, right? You wouldn't have been able to like, you know. No, probably not. I mean, I guess if you're acting in the scene together, you're going to be like two feet apart from each other. It's probably you know, it's yeah. probably weird. Well, you're right. I would, there, but uh, there wouldn't have been like they would they wouldn't have allowed that. You know, no. uh, somebody would say, hey hey hey, what's going on? Uh, yeah. Where was your mask on in between scenes? Because you have to have your mask on when you're not when you're not acting. Does that fuck up your makeup or no? Uh, no. I mean, you, they, they let you do it where you can like hold it, just kind of hold it down in front of your face. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, there's makeup stains on the, on the mask for sure, but they'll, they, uh, or they'll check you and then they'll give you a mirror and they'll give you the thing, touch it up. So you play Joe McCarthy, Joe McCarthy. Mm -hmm. Is that the most, uh, sort of infamous, uh, character that you've ever played? Like oh, in terms yeah. of fame? I think so. I don't have I ever played anyone that exists. Um, uh, I think it is. Yeah, I don't know if I have I actually played. I played myself <laughs> cameos of myself, so I, and that would probably be more famous than no. Um, yeah, I think so. I, I would say that's the most infamous for sure. He's not a good dude. He's uh, uh, very timely. I, I think that movie is going to be very timely when it comes out. It's going to be out in February of twenty twenty one. Which 
both of these films I did, I keep seeing, you know, seeing Oscar buzz, which I don't know how that can be Oscar buzz when something's not even happening yet. But, um, I, apparently, uh, a movie up until March something can be eligible for, for the Oscars. It'll be 2020, 2021 Oscars, which is the, or the movies. Of um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, I'd say he's the most infamous. Yeah, make a long story short. <laughs> was it was it was it during the hearings? Is it is the is the story take place like during the the blacklist sort of situation, or oh, what, no. what's the time period? No, that's way before that. It takes place in uh, 1943. So uh, the premise, I guess I can give this. It's on IMDb. Uh, but it's it's uh, Billy Holiday uh, was singing this song back in the 40s called "Strange Fruit," which uh, is a uh, uh, protest song i mean it was it was very uh pushing out of buttons back in the day so she was a, a front one a runner of the civil rights movement and i play one of these old senators that are these racist senators that want to shut her down because uh, i think uh, uh one of the actors mentioned you know that she's inciting a civil right, rights movement um and so you know it's uh the government ends up putting an undercover guy uh to take her down, uh, make sure she stays addicted to drugs so they can discredit her. Um, and it's, I mean, it's a sad story and she was a, a still, still a hero uh, in a lot of people's eyes and my eyes, uh, the civil rights movement, even, even though, you know, she, she was a drug addict, but she still did a lot for, um, for the American community and, and uh, opening the eyes to what was going on and still, still going on to this day. So I think, I think when that movie comes out, it's, it's going to be very, it is timely, and it's going to be timely for a while uh, until we make changes. So it's, it's a story that needs to be told, and I'm glad we're telling it, and that I got to be a part of that. Now, uh, you said Oscar buzz. Now, and then uh, recently, uh, a lot of people started freaking out that the Oscars have come out with like a diversity initiative saying that to qualify for a best picture, you're gonna have to have a certain percentage of your um, of your cast, uh, crew, uh, some of your story represent some of these marginalized group or groups. I don't wanna say marginalized groups, I wanna say people that necessarily haven't always been put to the forefront of film. Sure. And there's people out there right now that are freaking the fuck out. Art is dead, how am I supposed to make my Lily White art anymore? Right. And, you know, number one, this is, sorry, side rant, side rant, uh, people mad at the Oscars thing. Yeah, for, you're talking about the Oscars, which has traditionally been an organization that is voted on, chosen by, nominated by people who have won Oscars. It's this snake eating its own tail. You get nominated out for Oscars, so you nominate other people for Oscars. And guess what? If you're a white person, there is a chance that you might be more inclined to like white movies or white actors. Yeah. So, you know, uh, is there an aspect to saying, oh, my God, you're trying to infringe on my right to make art? A little bit. But you can't deny that Hollywood and movie making has traditionally been an area that has, you know, not been kind to minority filmmakers, women, etc. So, you know, the Oscars isn't the world. The Oscars isn't a government. The Oscars isn't a bill of rights. It's an institution that's picking their choice for best movie and performance of a of a particular year. And if they say, "Guess what? We would like to correct some of these issues and moving forward in a few years, we would like the movies that we nominate as best to have a little bit of infusion from these other groups, fucking deal with it. Mm -hmm. Or guess what? Stop worrying about what the fucking Oscars are and you'll be fucking yeah. fine. Yeah. Do Sorry. You know, no, that's, that's a good point. We don't, we don't, <laughs> We don't make, you know, awards are great. It's okay to, to uh, pat each other on the back or whatever. But uh, I mean, we make films because we love making films. So we want to share our art. Um, I mean, the, the, the Oscars are so self-congratulatory anyway. I mean, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I, I I think change needs to be made. And it's it's not going to stifle 
I don't think it's going to stifle the art. Nobody's uh, stopping you from making the movie you want. Yeah, and it is. It's uh, people are thinking, oh, I, I, you know, you have to have. Um, the, the, it's 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 more than just the actors. I mean, how hard is it, you know, to to, to hire someone uh, from the fans community that's, you know, maybe a, a script supervisor? It doesn't have to always be the actors. Like it seems yeah. to me, the actors are the ones that are blowing their shit about this the most on on you know on Twitter and on social Film media. Makers. Yeah, hire, give people a chance. Like give people a chance who don't uh, often get, you know, the, the get overlooked in certain positions. It's it's not just about the actors, you know, it's yeah. direct directors, like crew people, like it's it's everything. No, absolutely, Randy. And and and, and if you are seriously freaking out because they're saying that 30% of your crew can't be just white dudes, yeah. then, then you need to really take a serious look at yourself. Exactly. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wait, wait. I got ten people. Three of them can't be bros. Yeah. Oh my god. I, I'm I'm freaking the fuck out. I got to put one gay character. It's 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 fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. you know I do a lot of stuff and I try to create a lot of content for indie filmmakers and my point to them is always make the fucking movie that you want that's gonna make you happy. Cast whoever the fuck you want. But at least be true, and you know this is more relevant with you because you're you like Shakespeare. But to the night, to thine own self, be true. You know you you ha you have to be honest with yourself about why you feel certain things, and you have to at least be able to consider people, different people for different roles. Mm -hmm. Keep your keep the when you're writing your script, be open to the fact that you might need to change the sex, ethnicity, or gender. Of the of, of of these characters to be more inclusive, just consider it, consider it, think about it. And if at the end of the day you actually go out of your way and you give people opportunities, and you're like, no, I want to make my movie, blah 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 blah, then you still get to make your movie. Guess what? You may not qualify for the best actor that year or for the fucking Oscars that year, yeah. but so you win an Independent Spirit Award, so you get but, something. <laughs> but, but but really, who gives a fuck? You know, right. just. Make the movie you want, just at least be open with yourself. And we got a comment regarding that. Unless it's a period piece, fantasy movie, it should be diverse. Writers have to see a more diverse world. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Eggs and Bacon, thanks for watching on Twitch. Uh, and uh, go watch uh, Eggs and Bacon's movie on Amazon, I believe. Uh, Dollhead? Yeah, I saw it the other yeah. day, Mike. Good movie. Yeah, I saw that too. Very uh, very well done, Mike. Thanks for thanks for, thanks for for joining the stream, brother. Um <laughs> Sorry, I got I got a little I got a little fired up there. You you were watching the other day when I had my uh, my uh, in the, uh, San Diego filmmaker San well, San Diego yeah. Film Festival rant the other day. Yeah. Uh, but uh, how do you feel about like the just sort of the festival circuit? You know, kind of going out there. How did how how do you approach it as an actor? Uh, the festival circuit. Yeah. Uh, you know. Oh, it's it's I miss it. I've missed it this year, uh, uh, but I, I love it's a great opportunity to network with people you'd never meet. Uh, usually, you go to these festivals, there are people all over the world, all over the country. Uh, talk about diversity. I mean, the film festival uh, circuit is how, is how the Oscar should be. I mean, it's you have films from all over the world, uh, people from all ki all kinds of backgrounds, uh, different ethnicities. It's it's a it's a fun a fun networking experience. I would say. I mean, that's that's how I approach it. I go to these film festivals. You know, usually, done a lot of shorts that end up in these festivals, and it's uh, one of the things I love most, I guess, is the open bar and and uh, socializing with people. And I miss that like crazy. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, Randy. We all we all see the pictures of you <laughs> in there, hobnobbing, jumping around. Okay, we got one other comment from uh, from Kenneth Ernstad. He says, instead of being upset about a director not casting who you think they should cast, why not become a director and cast who you want? The world needs more Spike Lees. Mm. Hmm. Interesting take, Sir Ernstad. Are you going to direct your first movie? Have you ever thought about getting behind the lens, the lens, Randy? Have you ever sort of thought of of of, of kind of is there a story that's burning inside of you uh, that that you at some point want to tell? Uh, yeah, I've actually um, I've directed a couple times. I did uh, directed a play, uh, and I directed a, a TV show that uh, Sue Vickery was working on for a while called uh, My Power of One. Directed one of the episodes of that, so I, I love it. I'm I'm uh, I'm an actor's director. I, it's uh, setting up shots and storyboards. That's like that's way over my head, all that stuff. But I I'm I'm one of those 
directors he was hands on you know getting with the actors and and um and creating the scene and keeping it ground and keeping it real so i would love to i'm i'm i've been writing a western for a while that i'd, I'd love to really to work on yeah I, it's um thought about directing it myself but i i mean i is it called the ba the, the ballad of randy goddamn davison <laughs> no, I, no. I, I, I would watch that no it's uh the title i have for it is uh it's, it's gonna be called woodson uh, which is Jesse James' middle name. Uh, so this the story would be about this. Uh, so the, the legend goes that Jesse James may have faked his own death. There's a lot of accounts of that. People claim they were Jesse James throughout history. So uh, originally it was going to be a short film. I, I don't know. I don't think I could take on more than that. But uh, so it's it's uh, these guys are playing poker at a table with this this old man. He's dying of consumption and and uh, he wants to stay in the game. And they, they, one of the guys says, uh, you don't have any more money. He's like, well, I have this. And they're like, what, what's that? And he goes, this is the whereabouts of Jesse James. And the guy, the guy, everyone laughs at him. Like, Jesse James, he, he was shot in the back of the head 15 years ago by Robert Ford. Uh, you're out of your mind. And then uh, he says, I used to run with Jeff, Jesse James. I was in the hole in the wall gang. Uh, they're like, all right, old man, we'll take your, we'll take your, uh, take your, your, your address. Uh, he's your like, map. Yeah, your map. Yeah, and so he's you know he's dying of consumption. So he's like, I, they're like, why would you give that up? He's like, I'm too old to go be chasing ghosts, and uh, you know I'm I'm dying of consumption. I just want to you know have fun play cards and and be have fun in the brothel, so to speak. And so these guys track this guy down, and I picture you know this this old guy and sitting in a bathtub smoking a cigar, and you know uh, these guys walk in and are like Jesse Woods James, you're under arrest. We're taking you to be hung to get the award money. So it becomes this road trip, and he, he you know, it's, uh, turns the guys against each other. Right? And a big shootout, they shoot each other. And uh, Je oh, Jesse James says, you know, I got $50,000 worth of train gold that I robbed in the desert. Uh, if you take me, you know, I'm, I'm getting too old to go do it myself. You take me to get it, I'll split the money with you. That's going to be worth more than any reward. So like, all right, we'll see if there's nothing there, and we'll shoot you ourselves and, and take you dead instead of alive. Uh, then turns the guys against each other. They shoot each other. Uh, movie ends. Jesse James digs up his gold, puts it on the saddlebag, rides off in the sunset. So it's, I mean, it's a short, simple story. Probably nothing new, but that's that's my idea, and that's probably better. Uh, I better copyright it because I just gave the whole story. Yeah, I was about to say, why do I have to watch the movie now, Randy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I'm, still, I'm still working it out in my head. That's why I think I had to tell the whole thing. Now it's on. Now it's now it's recorded, so I can start transcribing. No, I, yeah, man, absolutely. Hey, uh, everybody, uh, keep your fucking mouth shut. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. don't, don't nobody steal Randy's idea, please. <laughs> Are you? Is that like? Is that your? Um, did you gravitate towards towards the western? Is that like one of your favorite genres, or, or is or is the Jesse James character more like the what? What kind of um, attracted uh, you to that? No, I just uh, you know we have um, a lot of actors in this community that have access to uh, you know to western sets. I was about to say that sounds like a Larry Poole produced uh, sort of project. What do you think? I want to play Jesse James. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's. Uh, I grew up in Idaho. I grew, uh, grew up on a five acre ranch and we had horses. So, I mean, I'd love, I think, I think part of it, I love to make my dad proud. Like he's, my dad's a cowboy and I, I really didn't take the cowboy route. I have, uh, I guess, remnants of, of cowboy in me, I guess. You, you can take the, the boy out of Idaho, but you can't take the Idaho out of the boy. So uh, yeah, I'd love to do a movie where I'm, yeah, you know, like, like, like uh, John Wayne and Jeff Bridges playing Rooster Cogburn, you know, the reins in their, Reins in their teeth and they're firing two guns, you know, like uh, Billy did you, Hanks, um, a bitch, you know, did you see uh, come hell or high water? Oh yeah. I love, uh, I love, I love Taylor Sheridan, man. Do you watch Yellowstone? No, I have not, but I, I oh need to watch that. That was my life growing up. It, it was, um, uh, you got to watch that show if you have it. It's the Godfather with Cowboys. Hell or High Water is one of the best movies of the last seven years or so oh. in, in terms of like being a modern Western type, you know, and oh, yeah. uh, and, and just because you mentioned Bridges. Um, I also think uh, Heat is a, uh, is a is a modern Western, if you, if you really think about it. Heat? Um, yeah, Heat. Oh, yeah. And you were, and hold, wait, hold on a second. This is something that's never happened on this screen. It looks like we have a, uh, hold on a second.
We got oh, what up? What's up, Atkinson? We have we have we have a we have a, a party crasher just very much like Randy and Mark gate crash all the uh, social <laughs> events in San Diego and LA. Mark Atkinson has stopped by the stream. How you doing? Mark Atkinson has stopped by the screen to crash. How you doing, Mr. Atkinson? Good. How you doing, Lou? Hey, you got. We're, 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 I'm sitting here trying to talk to Mr. Randy Davison, and all of a sudden, you guys are are, are gate crashing my stream. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, I'm not only gate crashing. I'm gate crashing from the East Coast. Nice. Yeah, now, right now in time. It's like 11:30 almost here. Are you out there uh, for a festival, right? Or are you just taking some time away from the West Coast? Yeah, time away from the West Coast. Uh, I, I was here for a festival, but that was all virtual. So there was really no need to leave San Diego. But yet there was. So, yeah, I'm here. How are the parents? Now, how the par what do you say? How are the parents? How are the parents? Oh, yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're good. We're watching Yellowstone right now. We were just talking about that. Were you just, did you hear that? No. Yeah. Yeah, weren't we? That's the, like the last that like. Oh, good segue. Lou's yeah. like, hey, when I say Yellowstone, party crash. You like it? Oh, it's great. Yeah, I got one more, one more episode of season one. Oh, nice. Yeah, we we'll get to the final wow. episode of the, the last season. It will blow your mind. Okay, you guys were just talking about that a few minutes ago. No, yeah, we were. We were talking about like modern westerns and different things like that. Oh, uh, okay. There, yes. but. Uh, obviously, I uh, pre-approved this bit, but the reason I had invited Mark to crash is because you guys are the two notorious party crashers where we're sitting here in San Diego scratching our balls. All of a sudden, it's like an Oscar night or Emmy night party, and you guys are both like, I've seen pictures oh, of you with, with all kinds of like major A-list celebrities. Yeah. Uh, how the tip of the iceberg, though. We try not to get too picture crazy. Like... <laughs> We've we've had some crazy experiences, right, Mark? Oh yeah, yeah. What's your what's your move? What's, what's, the, what's the move? What's the move? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, let me, let me, let me, you gotta dress the part. What's that? You gotta dress the part. Yep. Yeah. Right, right. Who who'd you eat a hamburger with, Randy? I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I, I didn't eat a hamburger. I was gonna say uh, Mark did. Like uh, we we sat there and ate a hamburger with Queen and Rami Malek because Rami Malek's girlfriend's like, hey, well, I, want, I don't want this hamburger. You guys want it? Mark's like, yeah, I'll eat it. Yeah, so, like sitting there, like chatting with Rami Malik and Brian May, and Brian May was there too with his uh, his judge hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy, man. That first, the first, the Golden Globes party we crashed. So let me let me let me preface, like let me uh, set this up. So we go to L.A. Uh, it's, I have an 8 a.m. call the next morning in San Diego for a short film I was working on. And Mark's like, "Hey, let's go up to the Golden Globes see if we can crash something." I was like, "I, I don't know. I got to work in the morning." But my buddy. Uh, Richard Sankey, uh, he was uh, working the Golden Globes and uh, potentially could have uh, maybe gotten us into the uh, Beverly Hilton where the Golden Globes were. And we get up there and he's like, yeah, sorry, guys, I was on headset. I couldn't I couldn't get a hold of you. Uh, I can't give you a, uh, my room key. They only give me one key and they're on to that game. You know, we can't uh, we, we can't get away with it. So I had a mini breakdown. I was oh, like, yeah. I'm in my late 40s and I'm like, I'm like, God, you know, God damn it, Mark. I'm. I'm like I'm 47 years old and I'm I'm on the outside looking in. I got I got a film tomorrow in the morning. Like I'm done. I'm done with this acting thing. I just, we should be in those parties. And here we are, like a bunch of punk kids trying to get in. And so Mark's like, Hey, let's uh uh let's you want to let's go to Chateau Marmont. We'll have a drink and I'll have you home by midnight. I'm like all right. Uh, so so we go to Chateau Marmont. There's spotlights. Big line of people like paparazzi. I'm like oh great. Another freaking thing we're not gonna get into. Uh, so Mark's like, ah, oh, no, no, just trust me. Let's, let's, uh, let's go check it out. So we go, we start walking up and we're in our tuxedos looking good. We start walking up and, uh, there's some guy in a, in, in like one of the paparazzi and he's like, Hey, Mark Atkinson. Uh, Mark's like, Hey, what's your guy's name? Johnny? Justin. Justin. Yeah. He's like, oh, Justin, what are you doing here? He's like, Oh, I work with TMZ. I'm taking pictures of celebrities uh, as they go in. Uh, you guys going to this party? And Mark's like, yeah. Right in front of security, right in front of everyone. Uh, here comes Richard Gear walking up. We got the paparazzi takes a picture, and we we just kind of walk on the heels of Richard Gear. And so I'm in, and I'm I'm looking around. I'm like, holy shit! Like I'm looking around. It's like every A-lister you can imagine. And I'm I'm like, please be behind me, Mark. Please be behind me. I turn around. I'm like, like how the fuck did we do this? How do we get in here? 
so so we're in and then like I, I see Leaf Schreiber and a lot of people say that I kind of look like Leaf Schreiber. So I had I'm like, I gotta get a picture with him before the night's over. Mark's like, No, you're gonna get us 86. We're in. Like I'm like, he's like, you know what? Yeah, it's kind of worth it. You better. So that was like uh, I went over and and uh said, Hey, uh, uh Mr. Schreiber, I uh uh, I just have to tell you, I'm a big fan. Uh, a lot of I'm, I'm an actor. A lot of my uh, a lot of my friends say I am not him. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, no, no, it's a compliment. Like, it, would be, it would mean a lot if I could get a picture with him. So, so that was that was one of the few pictures we took. Uh, I think uh, Mark's got some stories, but that was that was the moment when and when we were in there. Like, I mean, we had some great conversations with people. Dermot Mulrooney, we hung out with him for a long time. Very excited. From Young Guns, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, Free drinks, by the way. What's that? Yeah, open bar, anything you want. Yeah. And that night, like, we talked to so many people, and I told Mark, I go, Mark, this is where we belong. Like, I felt comfortable. I wasn't, like, trying to be somebody I wasn't. I was like, because I'm a fan of movies. So all these people were just – people that I look up to and I know all their stories. So John C. Riley, I'm like, oh, when you're in Chicago, you sing that song, as Mr. the Mr. Clown, I blew my mind. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you know my work. So it was like, it was, uh, I miss it. There's got to be like a, a, a fine line, though, between sort of staying away, but then also you're at a party, you're supposed to say hi to people and talk to them, right? So it's kind of, you got to, you got to put your yeah, fanboy in your in your pocket. Like we eased into it. Yeah, we yeah. We crossed that line. Randy definitely did that night, <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I did another time. I uh, Liv Schreiber. That's kind of like my uh, my Al Pacino story when I met Al Pacino, and the only thing I could, the only thing I could think to say to them was uh, hoo Yeah. No, I was like, hey, I got introduced, and I was, like, hey, Mr. Pacino, uh, we got the same birthday, you and I, and I shook his hand, and he was like, good for you. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was that was that was a cool for you. All right, we got another comment from Eggs and Bacon directed towards Mr. Axis, and he says, "I can see his Pornhub account through the reflection in his glasses." All right, well, that's good to know. <laughs> As Mark, <laughs> all right, uh, Mr. Atkinson, I invited you on, uh, okay, to tell us a little bit about your techniques for for getting through security at, at these at these major events. What are the do's and don'ts there? Uh, the do's is do your due diligence, like find out like what, you know, what are the events throughout the year? Find out where the parties are, who's hosting the parties. That's a huge thing. Um, there's always going to be security. Uh, you do have to dress the part. You have to act the part too. act like you've been here as the, as the phrase goes or whatever. And, you know, maybe if you can kind of, uh, peruse the, uh, circumference there, if you will. And uh, check out where the weak points are in security. It's going to be harder now in this post-COVID era, though. You know, unless well, we're still would it be technically easier if you have a mask? You know, you can just be like, hey. I hey, think, hey, yeah. You know, I mean, there's that. Driver. There's also, like, I just think it's going to be, I think security is going to be a lot tighter now. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. Got some challenges. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think the big thing is just confidence, you know. Don't second-guess yourself. Act like you should be there. Um, but, uh yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Been to what the let's see, Golden Globes, uh, Emmy parties, yeah. film festival parties, yeah, Screen Actors Guild Awards. Like we we're we're like yeah. that thousand. There's there haven't been there. Well, we should knock on wood. Right, right. <laughs> and, and then you know some people were like, oh, you guys are just celebrity whores or whatever. Yeah. We're like, yeah, that's true. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can't deny that one. <laughs> uh, but it's also like it's it's you know, and people are like, yeah, you're not really networking. I'm like, well, no, there's been some, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it like too much, but we've been invited to some things from parties by yeah. people who have Oscars. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, recently. Recently, one. All right. Here's here's my question: Has yeah. has any has any has any major celebrity asked you if you had drugs? Uh, I mean, we've smoked some with some. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. I don't know if you count. Uh, I just can imagine some celebrity like, oh yeah, you know my work. Also, by the way, you got any of this? Uh, you know. Yeah. What happened, uh, Randy? Uh, there's a producer, I think, that asked Mark that at Comic Con. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's right, that dirt bag. Um, yeah, but uh, 
Oh, and then remember at the Chateau Vermont, like they they closed us off. Uh, they um, they did last call, uh-huh. and uh, I was talking to this really cute girl, and she was all bummed out. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I got a little flask in my my tux okay. here. I showed it to her, and she's like, oh, come over, come over with me and my friends. Come drink uh, with some crazy rich Asians. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. And it was half the cast from uh, from crazy rich, crazy rich. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. And then what was I had no idea when you're like, ah, oh, these uh, come drink with some crazy rich Asians. I'm like, yeah. 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 after I saw it, I'm like, oh, rich. Oh, that was crazy rich Asians. Yeah. I forgot what was her what's the lead's name? I I I hadn't seen the movie at the time. Uh, she's right. fresh off the boat that um uh, uh Woo, something Constance Woo. Woo, yes. And she's yeah. like, I am Constance. And I'm like, Of course you are. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah. Hey. All right. Well, I wanted you to come in real quick and, and crash the party, Mark. Yeah. Thanks for coming up. But uh, what 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 you got going on? I know you have a couple of films that are that are in festivals right now. What what's uh, yeah. what's happening with you? We got the uh, we got the Power Agent, which is uh, just was in the Rhode Island Film Fest, or sorry, the uh, Block Island Film Festival, and it's going to be in another film festival uh, that was supposed to happen in the fall, but it's going to get postponed till the spring. Um, and then still hearing back from a couple. I just found out earlier today that something I acted in last year got into the San Diego, uh, San Diego International Film Festival. So that's, um, yeah, the, the unfortunate for people like me and Randy and even you, Lou, any, any filmmakers, uh, these festivals are all virtual and, uh, there aren't any parties to crash, you know, so <laughs> yeah, burn of a year. So here's to 2021, you know? No, no shit. So yeah. well, Mark's, uh, Mark's got a, like uh, this year, we, uh, you know, we might 2021, we might not, not have to crash. We might be able to get on some lists because Mark's got a, a role in the, this Netflix ser- series, Selena, that's coming out. Yeah. And, uh, ah, he's like, damn, oh, it's going to be yeah. cool. Man. Like, that's, um, I mean, if Mark, if Mark gets on for, for Selena and you get, you know, an invite to the Oscar parties, you know, for the Fincher movie or the lead, yeah, the, the 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 then, then, then you never know. You never know. Yeah, but uh, uh, I do. Uh, I do want to thank you for, for for crashing the party for a bit, Mark. It was uh, it was my yeah. idea for a bit. No worries. <laughs> yes, any any party crasher knows when to when to the party <laughs> and when to exit the party. My um, Mark came in. He 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 surveyed the stream yard weaknesses and he and he, and he <laughs> did he my figured out. But we uh, we, but we, don't, we don't leave until and, they say no more booze. Oh yeah, you don't leave until the, the gates, guys. Yeah, until the booze right. until the booze stops flowing, then we go. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have you on uh, soon and do some more uh, some more pods with you uh, later on, Mark. And talk oh about yeah, we never have the one we did like two months ago. We talked about like Stern for three hours. I, I have it, but the thing is, uh, I was recording them before I got my new PC, and now my, <laughs> I got my new PC, so I'm gonna edit it. And if uh, it, it doesn't look good, then we'll just we'll do it live. <laughs> We'll do no. it live, yeah. We'll do it live. I, I kind of like these a little bit better. That that's All another right. thing, Lou. Uh, before I go, that that's another like little tip. Randy Randy's uh, seen and heard me do it. Is uh, if you see a celebrity who has been on the Stern show, you just say, "Hey, man, I loved you on Stern," or you know, "Hey, so and so, I loved you. Great yeah, interview," you know. And they always they always like that because it's kind of more of an obscure thing. Uh, yeah, I guess it gets kind of makes you like part of the club, you know. Yeah, I've like done that with Seth Rogen, I think, twice. When are you going to be on Stern? Are you going to promote this on Stern? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right, at Comic Con. Yeah, Comic Con. Cool. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Mike. Uh, I mean, Mark, and uh, Baba Booey to y'all. Bobo out. <laughs> All right, I kind of thought that was uh, a. Yeah, fun. I thought, I thought, you know, like I said, you guys are the quintessential. Uh, live vicariously through gate crashers because there's a lot of people that are up in LA and, and and they'll post pictures of themselves when they're doing like seat filler stuff at the Emmys or something and they're like oh I'm living a dream and I'm, you know I'm filling the seat here and, and they're sort of faking the funk a little bit like hey hashtag on set stuff like that wow. we're, we're we're down here like two hours away but like a million miles away as far as like fame goes and then we see you guys up there just hobnobbing, just like, hey, me and Liv Schreiber, you know, living the dream right here at the Chateau, you know, like. You know what's funny about that? We'll we'll ask some of our L.A. friends if they want to join us. It's like, hey, come down with us. We're going to crash these parties. And they're like, they live maybe 20 minutes away in the valley to come to Hollywood. They're like, what? I'm not driving all the way from North Hollywood <laughs> to Hollywood to, to maybe get into something. Like, we're driving two hours from San Diego. And you guys are going 805 to the 405. You guys are fucking yeah. in the middle of it. 
it's like it's a different mentality like we're we're we go there with a mindset we're like we're gonna get into something um we got still I mean, we got stories there's like do we haven't even touch, touched the iceberg on those uh, oh yeah but you know you, you, that's with idris elba talking about you'd be a good bond man he's like oh too old to play bond I'm like no 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 oh no. you really told idris elba you should play bond <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, he introduces me to his agent. He goes, oh, this is my agent, 007. I'm like, ah. <laughs> there. I, I, think, I think that, that, uh, that I mean, hey, man, celebrities are just like you and I. Right? Yeah, and see, <laughs> that's, we, we, we say that. They're like, I know, me and, me and Mark look like we're star effers sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. But there's something, too, going to those parties that I've been going to that I think, I, I mean, I don't want to say this, but I think, Getting the role in Mank, that helped me. I know that seems weird, but I, I, I had to go for four callbacks, and I didn't get the part that I actually auditioned for. Uh, but when I finally got the, the smaller role that I had, the casting director uh, told my agents that she really loved you. Or, or uh, David, I went for the final callback actually for the role that I did get. Thought that I was like, oh, now I got to read for this dopey maitre d. It's not even like a real part. Um, but it was. I thought it was just more like an extra role, but I had like six lines, so it was, it was awesome. But um, when she put her hand on me and put her hand on my back and said, "I just want to tell you, David loved you," and I was like, uh, "Fincher?" Fincher. I go, G uh, "David Fincher said he loved me." And she's like, "He did." And I'm like, uh, "So then when I did that audition, I was like, I mean, I was like, I, I think I got this already." Um, so anyway, to like go back to like going to the parties and like feeling comfortable like enough to be around these people who I put on a pedestal, you know, like these people that I looked up to, they're just people. It's you start to feel relaxed around these people. The fourth callback I went to, I'm in the, the waiting room with Josh Dumel, uh David Harper, uh the kid with the mullet and the mustache from Stranger Things, and Michael O'Keefe um from uh Caddyshack, Danny Newton, for God's sakes, one of my favorite movies of all time. Newton! Yeah, and so miss it. Had we not had those those uh, party crashing things and gotten more comfortable being around celebrities, I would have psyched myself out. I would have been like, "Oh, I'm a nobody. I'm the only, you know, I'm the only nobody in this room of people who were, you know, who, are, who I look up to and that have, have watched and loved their work." But it didn't face me. I'm like, "Ah, I belong here." You know, like when we finally got into some of those parties, it's like, "Ah, I'm finally where I belong. I'm not on the outside looking in." And I would have felt here I am in this chair. I'm on the outside looking in. One of these guys are going to get the role. So I know that's a weird, that's a weird thing to help boost your confidence. But I feel like it, like it helped. I mean, well, I, there's there's definitely an act like you've been there before sort of portion to it. Like, do you subscribe to the like? I mean, because some people's like, well, listen, you know, should be kind of honest where you are in your career, and then other people are like, you know, just fake it till you make it. Act as if I, I you know, act, I, I, I'm. I kind of teeter back and forth on kind of my approach to, 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 to things like that, but I, there's definitely something to being in that environment and, and, and making your inner self more comfortable with that situation. So that, so that, you know, that might've given you an extra layer of confidence at, at one of those callbacks, Yeah, you know, and that, and that might've been that. I mean, the, the one thing I was going to say, you know, when, when you asked her, you know, when she said David loved you and, she, and you're like, David Fincher, she should have said like, no, Oh, Russell. <laughs> and then you would have been like, oh, fuck, no, nah, fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, David but, said he loved me. I was like, uh, I, ran, I ran out after the audition. I ran out. I called my wife. Yeah. What? Because what? She said, David Fincher lo loved me. I might get this. I might get this role. Uh, and I was super worried because, so I auditioned for the role of Ben Hecht, uh, who just would have been, I would have played one of Gary Oldman's like best friends in the movie. He was one of the screenwriters of Gone with the Wind, Wizard of Oz. Uh, they called him the Shakespeare of Hollywood. Um, uh, so, I mean, I studied the hell out of him. I had the mustache and, and uh, I really thought I was going to get it. Uh, but the guy, the guy who ended up ultimately getting it looks just like him. I mean, uh, and I don't know. I, I don't know if it came down to that. Uh, but Fincher's known for that. Like there's several, you know, you got to go for several callbacks. And it was just like one after the other after the other. And I get there for that final one. And then I, I get a message from my agent. That says, um, uh, "Sorry, unfortunately, you didn't get the role." That's all I saw. I didn't even finish the email. I'm like, oh, oh, of course I didn't. I'm, I'm in the waiting room with David Harbor, like Michael Keith. And then so I go back to the email and it goes, "But uh, they want to offer the role of the maitre d." 
or they want to know if you'd play the role of the maitre d'. They loved you and it's a smaller role, but you'd be a part of the film. So then I was like, what? And then I messaged back. I'm like, F yes. Like, don't even ask me on stuff like that. Just accept, accept. Yeah. So then I went, wait, this is a direct offer. Like, I don't have to audition. Um, are there lines? She's like, I think so. Let me check with casting. So she checks and gets back to me and said, yep, it will be a direct offer. So I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, so I do that, and then I, I go to the Sholo Film Festival on Cloud Nine. Like I'm, I finally have something to offer in like interviews. Like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be playing a part in Fincher's next next movie. Uh, mm -hmm. So I do the uh, the festival, and the last day of the festival on the way home, I, I get a message from my manager, and she says, uh, "Oh yeah, we were wrong. Sorry, it's not a direct offer. They want you to come read for the Major D." So then I was just like psyching myself out going oh oh my god they pulled the roll they put the wool out from under yeah, so i'm like fincher doesn't like me casting director likes me uh pulling for me fincher wants somebody he knows his, his dad wrote this movie and wants somebody you know anyone would kill to work in a fincher movie even like celebrities would take one line because it's fincher right. so I'm, like, ah, I'm not gonna get there uh so then that's when i go back i go to the callback for that like the fifth callback uh, Major D, I get there and that's when she tells me David loves me. And I'm like, oh, wait, Fincher was the one who liked me, not the cast director. So, um, or maybe both, I don't know, but I, I got it. And so we'll see, see how it turns out. I can't wait to see you on that, man. You said, uh, you said that, that, that even celebrities would sort of kind of take one line. Um, a question I have uh, for, for actors is, um, like when you see, and, 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 and this kind of struck me because I was watching Moneyball the other day, mm -hmm. and, and, and Philip Seymour Hoffman plays a baseball manager, but yeah. I, I felt like that part could have gone to anybody, like any like unknown actor, and it would have been the same movie because the movie is really about Brad and, and Jonah, um, mm -hmm. and, it's, it's, and, and it's a two-man movie, really, and, and he's playing Artie Howe, who used to manage the Mets, manage the athletics um and do you what do you what do you see when you when you when you see a movie like that do you think that like a big time actor is wasted in a role like that and that should kind of be go to somebody more unknown or is that kind of just like the cutthroat world where it's like okay this is uh this is a sorkin script and and i want it and i want to be there you know what i mean like and, yeah. and i don't care if it's if it's a smaller role uh no i, I think um I mean, it sucks. Sucks for actors like me who are, you know, miss lose out. The, and that makes me more mad with voiceover stuff. Um, mm. A lot of the Disney films, they use these big celebrities, um, and they should use, you know, maybe use one or two. And, right. uh, it's kind like it. overkill. Like you need, you yeah. know, you, you're getting like there's nothing memorable about Philip Seymour Hoffman's performance in that movie right. other than the fact that that it was like a brand name casting decision. Like you'll do it, yeah. you know. But, but if we didn't, if we didn't get, if we didn't do that, we wouldn't have got Drexel. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Yeah, That's it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but but I'm kind of torn on that because there's some iconic small small performances in films. Or there's no no small roles, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that. Uh, for my sake, yeah, I hate it. But uh, some of the most iconic movies that have these these cameos that. Yeah, it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of a fine line, you know, make the yeah. movie that you want. If Philip Seymour Hoffman says, yeah, I'll play the manager, and then you're just like, fuck it, I guess we got, I guess, I guess we're building a dream team, right? You know, LeBron going to the heat. Um, I have a couple more questions. I got another bracket bit, and I want to talk about the projects that me and you have worked together on, yeah. uh, Randy, but we're about a, a, an hour 20 in, so I want to give us a quick little break in case you need to use a, uh, get some water, grab the, uh, use the toilet, whatever. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to be back with more Randy Davison, Randy G.D. Davison. We're going to talk to you about the origin of that nickname as well um, when we come back. Remember, if you are watching, uh, let me know what the score is because I'm not watching football. Uh, make sure that you give the stream a like. Um, leave a comment or a question in any one of the feeds that's live right now, and we'll, we'll ask uh, questions of Randy uh, when we get back right after this.
And we are back. Lou Martinez, Big Chief Burrito, Randy Davison, Randy Goddamn Davison, as he is called amongst local circles, back with you on Fireside Chats with Big Chief Burrito. Um, can we talk about the origins of your nickname here locally? Uh, <laughs> I hate that nick nickname, Randy, <laughs> Goddamn, Randy Goddamn Davison. So uh, Jody Silly, who's a... Uh, Great uh, film proponent here in San Diego. She's uh, head of the San Diego Film Consortium. It's really brought filmmakers in San Diego together. She's done a, a great job over the years. Uh, we did a, uh, a birthday video for her one year. And a lot of it was kind of tongue in cheek, us playing ourselves. Uh, there was a, a gender. So you're saying we can, we, can, we can retire the nickname today, then, right? After you tell we, us the story, we, we can retire the nickname, right? Let's come up with a new one. And it off to Jody Silly. She's from now on uh, to be called Jody Silly. <laughs> what about Jody Oso Silly? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Jody Oxo Silly. She lives in uh, TJ. It's her favorite uh, convenience store for liquor. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, just a name she started throwing around and then it stuck with you, right? Well, okay. So. Uh, Jen McCleary Allen was playing a makeup artist, uh, uh, one of our, our local filmmakers here, uh, pretending to do my makeup. And I go, can you put a little uh, eyeliner under my eyes? It makes my eyes pop. She goes, yeah, in a minute. I go, in a minute? No, now. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? I'm Randy Davison. I'm Randy goddamn Davison. So that's that's where that came from. Uh, and a bunch of people uh, kind of uh, took it and ran. And, and I guess that's that's how that stuck for a while. I'm probably going to hell for that nickname. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I was about to say that's a, that's that's a that's a nickname you you weren't allowed to say on national TV for for a long time. You were right. you weren't you weren't allowed to be blasphemous. So I mean, oh, obviously, you gotta watch Yellowstone. They like it's, there's commercials on that channel, and they say some nasty stuff on that show. Yeah, I gotta watch that. I, that's been off my radar for a little bit of it. I also oh. gotta watch Cobra Kai that everybody's freaking out about. That's good. Uh, that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I watched it when it was on YouTube a while back, like when it first came out. But Yellowstone, man, it's the it's the Godfather with cowboys. Okay, and, so you 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 had cool. me at, at Godfather with cowboys. You'll, now, be able, how, you'll be able to like the characters. You'll go, oh, that's that's Sunny, clearly uh, yeah. uh, Brando. I mean, it's it's very parallel, but it's it's awesome. How many how many IMDb credits do you have now, Randy? Uh, I got because of like. I wish I could take some of the 48s off. I hate to say that. Um, right. Because I got, <laughs> sometimes I've done like more than one in a year. I don't have the same yeah. character. In there. It's like, ah, that's clearly a 48 hour film. So I think, I, I think I'm nearing like 100 credits at this point. Because I think one of the things I talked to Merrick about was, you know, like he would be like, hey, does this have to be on IMDb for stuff? And then he would kind of evaluate the product, the project, yeah. and see whether it was going to like maybe had a chance to win some awards. But you don't want to have just just credits on there or uncredited stuff, you know, because it just kind of clogs you up, right? Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Um, I mean, there's a couple of things. Somebody put a PSA up there that I did. I'm like, ah, I don't want that up there. Like, there's no commercials on IMDb. Like, why is that there? Have you ever I, said no to a project? Take it off. Have you Have you ever said no to a project, Ren? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get asked that. Like everybody says, I do everything, but yeah, I, I turn things down. There's, um, um, yeah, I do. What? Are, well, how? How? How much of a shit show does it have to be for you to turn something down? <laughs> uh, 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 shit, <laughs> you, know, you know what? Like Philip Seymour Hoffman once said, you know, take everything that comes your way. It's uh, you. It's, it's a lot of these short films that I do. You know that? I mean, they go on YouTube. They, they get out there, but. Um, ultimately, it's just practice. It's like yeah. you know, going to the batting cage and, and practicing your swing. Uh, so I want to do as much as many things as I can. If, it, if it's something that I see, you know, a script that I can benefit in, and that's something that I can, you know, there's some things you look at and you're like, I can't get passionate about that. I've, I've done that. I've done that type of role. Too many of, too many of those. Uh, um, and so I'll go. I'll say, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, there's been projects that I signed on to uh, without, without vetting it uh, at, at certain points. I don't want to, I don't want to say any names, but there was uh, one project I did. Uh, the the uh, person who contacted me, I, I thought he was a, a producer when I first moved to LA, very similar name. Uh, and I said, no, oh, no, no, I want to work with you. I, uh, he was like one of the producers of the original Star Trek movies. <laughs> and this wasn't him. 
And I go, no, I don't, even, I don't even need to see the script. Um, and I got the script, and it was like, what the fudge is this? And I ended up doing it because I committed. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's that's happened once where I've kind of regretted it. But it's still a good time. It's always a good time, you know. We um we had a uh, I remember and I just again because when I did Alien Story and I needed you for a for a small part mm-hmm. and uh, and I was very proud of the fact that I had enough I had enough gravitas oh yeah in the film in the film community when I did that project that out of all the actors that signed up for it only one actor asked me to see a script everybody else I was like Merrick I need you to play uh, the president he was like yep. I was like, Laura, I need you to play the Secretary of Defense. Yep, I'm in. Randy, I need you for a, for a small part. Uh, you're like, yeah, count me in. <laughs> so I, you know, you know, just who was the who was the you're not gonna see the actor who wanted to see the script? No, 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 no. Ah, no. Okay. I, 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 I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that that actor or actress. Yeah. Shall shall remain nameless, but but they I, but they they did give me like oh but I you know oh, I can't do a voice because I'm you know I'll do either my my male or female impersonation. Uh, I, I, have to, I have to do a, I have to do a gender neutral voice if I'm going to do the the impression. That's they were like hey, it was that sounded, you know I think I, I just had something in my throat there. Uh, but no, they, they were just they they just was just like oh well, I don't, this isn't what I signed up for and uh, I don't know what this is about and I want to know more like, I need to see the script before I commit and I was like uh, uh, I haven't even written the script yet I just have an idea and I'm just gathering talent and I'm a fucking just get it done <laughs> yeah. but you know but but what but what uh, thems are the breaks now I asked uh, Merrick this question um, about sort of. Um, you know, politics in filmmaking, specifically this year and during the last like three years, mm-hmm. um, and and I asked him, you know, what he would do if he had booked a part and he was on set and um, excuse me, if he was on set and like the producer or director walked on, yeah, <laughs> walked on set and had like a maga hat or something on, and he basically said he would sort of play it by ear. Um, you know, sort of kind of see if, if the guy was really coming on to like spout some stuff or was like, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but then I also asked him a follow up question, which is how would he I said this is kind of a three part question. The question to you is if you book this part and you see a director or a producer walk on set with this, does that make you sort of want to walk off set? Does that just sort of make you sort of feel differently on set? And would you, and then he basically said, well, if the person was kind of real militant about it or was just kind of trying to recruit people would be something I might have to walk on set. And I said, I want to ask a third person this question, which would be another actor. So let's say Merrick went through something like that where he booked a part and it was a guy with a maggot hat directing, whatever we said, we made a joke said it was Kanye West. But, um, and he said, basically I quit. Right. I don't want this part. And then they're like, hey, Randy, we really liked you at the audition. Merrick just passed on this role. You know, would you take that part? That's a, that's a tough question. Um, this What's person of- this person would try be trying to push uh, Trump onto me. I think that I think well, what I think it would be like this is you know like I said Merrick walks on set he feels uncomfortable because the producers were stomping around with his MAGA hat on. Give me, give me yeah. one second. Uh, yeah. I, uh, my, my computer's about to die. I'm going to grab the charger real quick. All right. Go ahead. I'll, I'll vamp. I'll vamp. Yeah, we'll vamp. Talk- yeah, vamp for like one <laughs> All right. What's up, everybody? Uh, Big Chief Burrito here. We are live with Randy Davidson, Fireside Chats with Big Chief Burrito. We are going to go into what me and Randy have worked on before. We are going to be revealing for the first time ever, and I know Ken Erstad, Stephen Michael Shade are probably watching Scenes from an unreleased pilot called Insecurity that I worked on with what was then Red Lion Productions um, with Ken Erstad, Steve and Michael Shin, the homies. Um, and we're going to be showing some scenes that connect the 2 a.m. burrito universe with David Fincher by Randy Davison Connection. I also want to let you guys know that I'm going to be going live next week. Wednesday, and we're going to be talking to filmmakers that are part of the San Diego Latino Virtual Film Festival. Um, they are going to be doing a bunch of. It's going to be a virtual film festival, like all, like every other film festival is right now. Um, and I'm going to be giving away tickets to free online screenings for a lot of different films. Um, all you need to do is 
be watching live on one of the platforms and ask a comment or question of the filmmakers when I am interviewing them live. That's going to be next week. Uh, remember to follow us. If you haven't, if you like the stream, please make sure that, that you are following and liking the 2AM Burrito page on Facebook. I am trying to get to a 1,000 subscribers this year. We're about 733, so we want to hit that 1,000 subscriber mark, so make sure you're, you like and follow us on 2AM two, uh, two Burrito on Facebook. We are also live now, and I know Dizzy and Mike are watching because they are Twitch streamers. Follow them in the comment section if you want to follow some gamers on Twitch. Uh, but we are doing just chatting and interviewing and podcasting on Twitch, twitch.tv slash 2AM Burrito. And obviously, if you watch anything on YouTube and you have a Gmail account, then you know that you also have a YouTube account. And follow us on YouTube, youtube.com slash 2AM Burrito. Uh, you'll get notified every time we go live. I'm doing interviews with all kinds of people in the industry, in and out of the industry. We have upcoming interviews and streams with Dr. Jen, who's going to talk to us about cannabis cooking. We're going to talk to my friend Michelle about sustainable living. We're going to be talking to filmmaker, filmmakers from the San Diego Latino Film Festival. I just released an episode on YouTube where I had an interview with an ex-skinhead uh, where we talked about race relations, about hatred, about all these different things. So I appreciate you guys that have been watching the stream faithfully. I appreciate the comments and I appreciate the love. And now we're going to go back to Mr. Randy. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, we're, we're, shout out to my boy, Beluka Boy, who's watching. He's the, uh, the Boise State pimp. Like when Boise State pimp, I like that. When you watch the games on, on ESPN, he's like the front row. He's, he's uh, always dressed up as the orange and blue pimp. He's a cool dude. Randy. Yes. I'm trying to dodge the question. You can tell him. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, we, oh, we, we, we had a break to that question. Okay, you, you actually – I was already past it, but you reminded me. So, what? I mean – Honestly, you know, as an actor, you're supposed to take a lot of work, right? And yeah. and, 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 and and I've always said, you see, on set, just like at the dinner table, you don't talk politics, you don't talk religion. Yeah. So, but but you're a working actor, you're a working actor in Hollywood, and but it just happens to be that one of your friends has just turned down this role or quit this role because he didn't feel comfortable with the producer or director on set spouting their political views. You're being asked to replace them. Maybe because you're a white guy, he's not going to be really, you know, coming at you. So maybe your experience is not going to be as bad as a previous actor. Yeah. But what what would be your thought process be in either accepting or not accepting a role? Like that? Uh, uh, so so I mean, what what are we talking about? Like I, I myself, I'm not a fan of Trump. I mean, I'm I don't know if people are going to like unfriend me now or block me because of that. But um, is that what we're talking about? Like the guy's wearing a MAGA hat. Uh, I'm gonna I'm. Ah, it's so hard because I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm. That's something I'm. I'm fighting with my own family about that. I mean, my family in Idaho, uh, we have very different views on that. And it's. Uh, my dad always said, you know, we we don't talk politics at the dinner table. You don't talk religion, just like you said. But uh, like, he'll bring it up. Like he'll bring it up to me. I'm like, Dad, we don't agree. Why? Why, are, why do you even want to talk about this? Like he's. I've never seen people so passionate about politics in my life. Uh, until the last four years, but um, I'm I, uh, every day Trump does something to, to make me to make me extremely angry. And I said, even today, there I even talked about him, and I said, if he gets reelected, if by by a chance he gets reelected again, I'm going to have to not not engage and watch the news for four years. I'm going to have to become an uninformed jackass because I can't take it for my own sanity. It's you're moving to the mountains. <laughs> Yeah, um, but uh, you know, as an actor, I did a Scientology commercial, and I, by God, don't agree with that. Um, actors are independent contractors. Um, you know, are you gonna like if you're a roofer, um, and, uh, you're roofing a, a MAGA's, like a, someone's wearing a MAGA hat's house, you're, you're gonna do the job. Um, so I look at it that way. I mean, unless, like you said, like Merrick said, if he's like pushing his ideals on, on you, and like. If you don't support Trump, you're not going to be in my movie. Then, yeah, I, I would walk. I mean, I would depend, depends on the situation. But if right. the wearing a MAGA hat and he's, they got, oh, Trump's the greatest president that ever lived. It's like you know, I'm going to keep my mouth shut, do my job. It has nothing to do with my job, um, and, and do the, the best I can. I mean, it would. There's a, there's a fine line, you know what I mean? You, 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 
but it's a moot point because Hollywood hates Trump. So, you know, you're, you're, you, know, I mean, you don't know how many times I've been called, oh, you're another, another Hollywood lib, Hollywood libtard. So, I mean, there, there's truth to that unless you're James Woods or, or uh, John Voight. Uh, there, I don't know many, many Hollywood people who do, who do support Trump. There's some, but. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of like an unfair question because obviously you're a working actor. You you want to be a professional. You'd like to think yeah. that no matter what the director, producer's political leanings, uh, you would sort of at least be professional about doing the job, unless it made you personally uh, uncomfortable or you know you, you kind of felt that you were taking a stand about something, which is completely fine. Yeah. You know, I you know, hey, I got to throw in a couple of tough questions. They can't be all fluff pieces, Randy. Yeah, no, that's yeah. good. That's good. You make me keep me on my toes. <laughs> All right, uh, we have another couple of con comments. Uh, Ken Erstad saying, we love Luis. Thank you, love Kenneth. Me. I love you, brother. And, and and I hope that we get to work together. And he says, okay, I am subscribing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Erstad. We've known each other for like five years, and you are now just going to start subscribing to me. All right, cool. So let's talk a little bit about the movies that we worked on together. And I told people while we were away that today, today, Randy, we're going to do a sneak worldwide premiere of a scene that connects the 2 a.m. burrito universe with the David Fincher universe. Wow. So you've heard about you've heard about seven degrees, six Kevin degrees, of, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Well one degree from Kevin Bacon now. Murder yeah. Kevin Bacon and Gary Ullman. Well well that that makes me two fucking degrees from Kevin Bacon and oh. one degree from fucking uh, Gary Ullman <laughs> <laughs> through you because I've been in a scene with you and today Today, Randy Davidson, we're going to watch that scene, all right? Oh, yeah. uh, because, uh, like I said, me and and, and uh, Ken Erstead, who's watching, Stephen Michael Shin, the other friend, they had a concept for a, a show about rival security companies called Insecurity, and they brought me on board, and I tried my best not to lure it up, which means completely take over, so I took their version of the script. I added a little loot to it. We decided to work on it together, and, uh, and they're like, well, we need a guy to play – this kind of asshole military type uh, security guard owner. And I could only think of what, well, I could think of a couple of people, but I talked to, I, I was like, Oh, you see me I, as a militaristic uh, asshole. <laughs> one of those two is true. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, I said, <laughs> I'm militaristic. <laughs> um, but I said, let's, let's try to get Randy Davison for this. Um, and so we, we worked on, uh, we worked on the script. We, we, we had a couple of days and right now we're going to do, I'm going to show a couple of scenes from that show. Um, so, so me and you can, can kind of talk about it. All right. Cool. And without further ado, here is a sneak peek. Never before seen a couple of scenes from insecurity. Motherless whores. God damn it. <sighs> All right, so that's your first introduction to Frank Linus, uh, who is uh, the owner of one of the security companies that, that is featured in the show. Uh, <laughs> Ken Ertha said, I will never forget the spitting tobacco chew on your shoe, Randy. <laughs> Well, that's just, did Kenneth have to do it because because uh, yeah. I, 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 they couldn't get my mark. 
<laughs> you were spinning all over the place, Randy. Oh, that's right. No, we I did do it, didn't I? Because it was just a few. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was just a few. No, uh, but just to give people a little a little background on why I showed that, basically one of the main concepts in the in the in the pilot episode is that these guys are always playing pranks on each other and you being the boss of the rival security company they came into the middle of the night took a shit in your driveway and then uh walked away uh hero team ken says the driver in that scene is good looking <laughs> shout out ken <laughs> shout out kenny who was in that uh john vasquez was also in that little clip all right and in this next clip we're gonna see a little bit more about the frank uh linus character I smell prideful arrogance laced with sad desperation. All right, who farted? Did someone just take a shit in this hallway right now? Well, well, well. If it isn't the three asshole amigos. <laughs> ah, come on, Frank, you're better than that. That's what you're going with? <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Don't fucking do that shit. Don't, don't praise him. Don't feed the animals like at the zoo. Oh, no. oh, God damn it. Frank, what the fuck are you doing here? I always wonder what kind of shady shit you empty-headed mouth breathers was up to. Now I know you've been stealing my clients. Like an old bottom-feeding sucker fish, eating all the sloppy seconds out of an old gator's mouth out of Mississippi River. I'll I'll send it back in uh, five, ten minutes. Yes, you guys get the fuck to work. Right. Oh, man. <laughs> like an old... Gators Mountain in the Mississippi River. I just remember talking to you and just being like, let's just 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 riff, just keep going, just like <laughs> come up with something just like crazy there. <laughs> what do you cool. thought so far? <laughs> All right. Um, let's, yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh Kenrith said anyone oh, named Kenneth also a while ago, right? Yeah, this is a while ago. You know, we this is something that that uh, that we that that you know we started, I edited it, and then when I got to the final edit, um, what happened with this project is that we had like four labs and two booms going at all time. So when I was trying to do the final edit, somebody's mic would be rustling. So it took me forever to try to go find the mic in each take that was creating the problem. And it was literally impossible for me to do that. Uh, then a whole bunch of shit happened in my life that kind of caused me to kind of reprioritize what I was doing. I had to like basically refocus my energy to work less hours so I could take care of my father at home. So it, it kind of became something where I had to kind of put my art off for a little bit. And, and, and even though I think it's still a very valid product, um, you know, I didn't have the bandwidth to, to really pull it off at the time. You know, that we sort of ran out of money and, and we didn't really we couldn't really like outsource some of the post-production stuff. It was something that I was gonna basically have to do myself. Um, and you know, like like anything, sometimes you have time for your art, sometimes you don't, so you know. But the good news is that uh, I recently gave myself uh, a $3,000 present and got myself a new PC that's running like a fucking beast. Um, and uh, I recently reopened up the project and began to tweak it, and and and, uh, and I'm doing a final edit on it so that so that I can get it out there because it is a it is a really cool project. There there are some funny stuff in there, and I really liked uh, I really like working on it with you, Randy. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. But but that is not all. Oh, uh, the scene we did, right? Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. Your boy Lou Martinez has what I like to call chops. Uh, that means that not only am I a director, but I used to be an actor, so I like to flex. Uh, let me give myself on the line. I like to flex the proverbial acting muscle once in a while. And being able to get into the ring with Randy Davison, who recently got into the ring with Gary Oldman, putting us one degree of separation from Gary Oldman in the 2 a.m. universe, two degrees from separation with Kevin Bacon in the 2 a.m. through Randy Davison. I also know that we're connected through Merrick MacArthur because he, he, he's, he's connected all over the place too. Um, but it just sort of validates us as a, as, a, as, a, as a company and it makes me feel good. But we did get in the ring and this is Randy versus Louie. Can I get some votes in the chat? on who wins this oh, battle. Man. Tell me who acts the best. Who oh, acts man. the best between me and Randy? I'm putting it on the line. Randy Davis and Lou Martinez, here we go. 
<laughs> so tell me, funny man, why ain't your flag up yet? You know it's almost nine o'clock? We have a flag? That's kind of legit. So do you have any idea why I'm even here? You want to know why? I really know. Well, I'll tell you why. This morning, some underachieving shitbag decided to defile the sanctity of my front porch. He used my front porch as a toilet. Sounds about right. You know what? It was one of your shitbag underachievers. How would you possibly know that? I have secu security footage. I got a gay garage cam. Oh man, this could be anybody. You got a mystery pooper on your hand. Don't come blaming it on us. It won't be a mystery once I get my lab results back. Lab results? You're gonna go full shit gate on this? Oh yeah. And once I get my results and I prove it, I'm gonna go to the cops. And then I'm gonna go to the FBI. I mean, more like IBS, am I right? You know, if you weren't always joking around all the time, you might actually make something of this place. I'm gonna need a swap from everyone. Everybody that's working and everybody that's off duty. All right, Frank, let me tell you a couple of three things. Number one, fuck you. Number two, if you want anything from any one of my guys, you're gonna get a court order first. And until you get that court order, the only thing you're gonna collect is your SSI payment, you old ass motherfucker. Fuck you. I'm gonna get a court order. I'm gonna get a court order. And that's not the only thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shut this shit whole place down for good. And then, I'm gonna have your shitbag, underachieving mystery pooper arrested and thrown in jail. Wait a minute. Is that that? Do you have that shit in that cooler right there? You goddamn right it is. Oh, God, oh my God, Frank. Get, put that shit away. I thought that was just your normal day-to-day -day stink. I didn't know you brought shit to a fucking meeting. Well, I, I was on the way to the lab after I leave here. Drop you it off. You do realize that you cannot get DNA from a stool set. More bullshit from the bullshitter. I'll be back. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this shit. Hey Frank, why don't you leave the dookie at home next time? Fuck you! Hey, let's wrap up that shit show. Let's go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to I'm get to the bottom of this shit. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's not that bad, is it? <laughs> What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts watching that? How do you think we? How do you think we did uh, uh, acting with each other? That was good. You're, you're really good, dude. Like, um, <laughs> you can do more. I, I know that I should act more. What I really want to do is act. Can I play? Uh, can I play like Pancho Villa or some sort of Mexican gangster in the yeah. your western? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, man. Well, I uh, let me see. I, I, we haven't had any boats yet, but I know Kenneth and. and uh, Mr. Erstad are probably watching. What do you guys think? Who do you think? Who do you, who do you, who do you think? I think? I think I'm going to be nice and I'm going to say that it's not a draw because Randy Davison is a much more talented actor than myself. I and, and I, and I, uh, I think, I think, I think you stay. You, I think I had a lot less to do in that scene because I was basically playing myself as an asshole boss of a, you know, so. Uh, you were you you create you actually had a character created there, and you were pretty much hilarious. The fact that he's fucking like militant and wants to go fucking take DNA samples and all that shit. Uh, let me see what 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 Ken says here. He says, "So you are both absolutely amazing actors, much better than I am. But Randy, you just exude so much fun personality. I gotta give my vote to Randy, but it is close. All right. Well, he's one of the creators of the show, so I guess his. I'd like to, his, I'd like to thank, thank the Academy for this piece of poop." <laughs> we had the fucking shit in there. All right, Randy. Uh, let, 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 let's wrap let's wrap this up. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a lightning round with you because okay. we worked 
we work together and um you know we 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 respect you your career like i said it's interesting what we were talking about it when i talked to Mar uh, merrick two days ago he was like basically saying you know i'm getting uh, all these, uh, you know, uh, guest, guest, guest spots on TV shows, but I'm really trying to get more film credits and you're on the, on the parallel side, getting film credit after film credit, looking to try to get more commercials and TV stuff. So more like, you know, regular work and stuff like that. So I always ask the, um, the ghost of Christmas past question, you know, where they come, they, they come to a young Randy right before he dives into, you know, Shakespeare and, and just gets a lifelong life of, of, of acting prowess. But here's your this or that, okay? Okay. Uh, you, can, you can have the acting career that you've had up until now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, plus, you know, uh, five seasons on like a Hulu show. Yeah. Right. Let's say they're remaking, uh, you know, um, I always say uh, the A team. So you're the you're the new you're the new Hannibal. Right. OK. All right. Or but but that's it. After that, it's Randy who. Hmm. Okay. Right. All right. And you just kind of middle around, you know, this or that. I still, or, get, to, I still get to act. Right. Yeah. But nobody knows you. So I, so I get to be like Dean Kane or like a. <laughs> Basically, no, you're, you're still acting, but, I, but I'm saying your career peaks there, right? No Oscars, no Emmys. You get, you get your your max accomplishment is five years on a remake. It's not, even, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not even Hulu. It's it's the Peacock Network. It's the NBC. <laughs> okay, it's not Hulu. Okay. Okay. All right. On the other hand, the Ghost of Christmas Past says, uh, Randy. You give up your acting career. You're gonna own seven dealerships in the greater Boise area. You're gonna have uh, tickets on the 50 yard line to Boise State. Oh, what? You're gonna have. Uh, uh, you're gonna have. Uh, you know, you're seeing your wife, your family, etc. But uh, but uh, and you're gonna have uh, for the rest of your life five million dollars in the bank, no matter what, and you can spend that money as you wish. Uh, what do you, what, what, is that a tough enough decision for you or, or do you think, or is it easy? Let's get with the city A team on the Peacock network. Stay with the city A team. I mean, I, lo I, lo I love that. I love that. Hey, um, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm more rich, but I'm, I'm going to be more rich. Uh, I can't take that money with me. I'm, uh, you know, I'll, hopefully I'll leave a mark. I'll leave some work, uh, that, that people will, will remember and that, that, um, uh, just, you know, leave something that, uh, has an impact on people. Uh, the Boise State thing, you make it tough. That'd be pretty, pretty uh, tough choice to have tickets on the 50 yard line and I can miss tailgating. But you know what? The sand bar in San Diego, it's a it's a Boise State bar in uh, really? Mission Beach every Saturday. The waitresses dress up in Boise State uh, shirts. Uh, they give out Boise State prizes. Halftime, we have like a uh, we play, we play uh, what's that game where you throw the cornhole, the cornhole for prizes? Okay. Uh, so it's like being at home every Saturday, and I'm gonna miss that. But uh, I try to make it home for a couple games. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, acting has has always been my love. Uh, I did work a job for about eight years that I got sucked into management, uh, and I got laid off in 2010 and realized, you know, what the fuck am I doing? This is what I moved to California for, and I, I got sucked into the casino industry for eight years, and I pretty much stopped acting. I moved to San Diego for for a lady and that can work out. And, um, uh, yeah, I, that, that's those eight years. I feel like I lost those eight years. There's some regrets there. Uh, but since 2010, I have, I've been doing this and I haven't looked back. I mean, it's, it's what I've, what I've always wanted to do since the third grade and blew the bear. So I'm going to stick with the shitty A team. And keep going. <laughs> hey, I, I try to make it tough. I just kind of like to know where people's passions lie, you know what I mean? Um, and I'm not rich by any means. I'm still. No, no, absolutely. I mean, that's a misconception. Somebody sees yeah. you on on a TV show or on a movie, and they assume that that you that you get millions of dollars to doing that, right? The reality of being an actor is, if you get the right role on a right show, that can sustain you for a few months. But you sure. you need to be constantly feeding the you know feeding the monkey, right? Yeah, absolutely. Or else. Or, um, 
although you know we, we do a lot of we do a lot of stuff for free i mean a, a lot of the a lot of my credits on imdb are, are free stuff with friends in san diego making things so to uh to work four days on a fincher film and, and get paid what i mean what what you feel you're worth is like it's 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 like somebody handing you a, a, a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. It's like, what? I mean, I get a, I get a play. I get a play with Gary Oldman. You're gonna pay me? Oh shit! Man. I would pay. I would pay to play with Gary Oldman. But uh, what? It's crazy. Oh, at what? At what point when when you when you started your career did you feel comfortable, like, stopping? You know, stopping to work for free, or or do you think a mistake that actors make early on is either um, moving to LA maybe too soon before they really kind of because I think you, you eventually got to make the move LA New York you know one of these main locations right or you have to be close damn close yeah. um, but. Do you think that 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 more mistakes are made by actors maybe that that move too early or actors that stick around too much and just do way too much local stuff like they're still doing like like student films a few years in you have to at some point kind of plateau from those you know 48s stuff like that right uh I mean, there's a lot because you also want to play with your friends and you also want to, you know, you're like, I'm not doing anything. Why wouldn't I? Right. But 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 mentally, like you said, to sort of, you know, to get into that mentality of I belong at these parties. Yeah. You know, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you can you can shoot yourself in the foot if you, you keep doing stuff for free and you keep. Uh, uh, I mean, but I'll, I mean, I'll still work with my friends and help friends out if it's a project that I really want to do, too. I mean, I'm. If we do the Western that I'm doing, no one's getting paid. I can't pay anybody. Right. Um, so, you know, you, it's it's kind of like a barter system. You help your friends out. They help you out. Um, so I'm not against that still. Uh, but, yeah, you can you can shoot yourself in the foot at, at one point and kind of get become oversaturated doing local stuff. But for me, it's still, it's still practice, you know. I mean, it's still uh, – 40, I know the 48 hours this weekend. I'm not, I'm not on a team. Probably the first time I've not done it in like eight years. Um, not by choice. Nobody asked me, but uh, I always look at it as like Christmas. You know, when you do a 48, you can either, you're going to get that, that crappy sweater that your grandma gave you for Christmas or you have a little gem that you might have a little chunk you can throw on your reel. So uh, there's stuff to benefit from that. It's, it's a, a good way to practice, but uh, as far as moving to LA too soon, yeah, a lot of young actors. I would I would advise them not to until they have a solid reel. I mean, enough material to put together a reel. That's because a lot of actors go up there and like I'm a pretty face. Uh, I don't know what it takes. I don't know how many young actors have asked me like, "Hey, dude, what do I have to do to like? How do I get into movies? Like, can I? Uh, do I just got to get pictures or something? Like, uh, maybe you want to get in a class, take some acting classes, uh, learn your craft." Like, like you want to, uh, you want to be good at your craft before you move to LA. Um, and I, li I lived in LA for five years, but, um, and I, you know, I had some some triumphs. But uh, LA will chew you up and spit you out. And if you're not, if you're not ready and you're not secure enough in yourself and your craft, uh, you're you're just another you're just another pretty face. I mean, you you have to you have, really have to work and you have to study. Uh, always be in a class, be in scene study, be working, um, network with other actors, other directors. I mean, it's. Do you jump? Or, do you jump around in terms of like the techniques that you use, and and or do you stick to like a specific one that you've always done since you were younger? Um, I, I used to kind of jump around. It kind of depends on on what the role is. If uh, if it's if it's something that I can relate relate to that I've lived in my my own life, then I, I can I can go with method. I mean, I can I can uh, immerse myself in it. But if it's something, uh, if it's something that I haven't experienced, you know, like um, like shooting my wife, I, I've, I have to replace it with something. So you know, I go back and forth from Meisner uh, to method. Actually, more my uh, more Meisner, I would say, on, on the stuff that I can relate to. And if it's something I can't relate to, I need to uh, use the magic gift. Like, okay, I'm, uh, I don't know if my, you know, I lose my wife to cancer. Well, I've never, never, uh, God forbid, I never want that to happen. Um, but, you know, I lost my mom to cancer. So I can replace it with those emotions that I went through, you know, when, when I lost my mom. 
So, yeah, it just depends. It depends on the uh, the role. But I'd say for the most part, I, I use Meisner. Um, Uda Hog and I always do the nine questions. Uh, you know, uh, who are you? Uh, where are you? What time is it? Uh, what do I want to do? What's getting in my way? Uh, what uh, uh, what do I need to do to get what I want? Uh, I don't know if I missed some, but I always I always ask myself those questions. Try to create a backstory. So uh, a little bit of method and a lot of Eisner, I guess. Mm. I don't mind I don't mind method actors, but I do mind actors on meth. So those yeah. are the those are the two. And I, I got to I got to um, I went to Uda Hagen School in the Village in New York HB Studios. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was a key student, which means I didn't have enough money for classes. So I would have to go like twice a month on a Sunday and work for four hours. So I'd be like scrubbing stairs, cleaning studios. I'd have to take roll. And then after every scene, I would have to move the furniture and stuff for all the for all the actors and shit. But I got to sit in on some of her classes. I never got coached by her directly, but I, I sat in on, on her on her acting classes. It was a big deal when you you look at the brochure for that for that semester and it'd be like we're just teaching a class and it's Sundays at six o'clock and I'm going to try to fucking, you know, get in it and stuff like that. But I got, I did improv and uh, monologue study and scene study with, with a lot of really good, a lot of really good actors. So I'm Uta Hagen for life in terms of like technique. That's the first, oh, yeah. when any act, when any new actor tells me like, oh, where should I start? I'm like, get the fucking Uta Hagen book. It's like $3 on Amazon and yeah. just fucking read that first do the fucking exercises that you can do by yourself. You know, number one is entering a room with a purpose and then, and then, and then take it from there and then, and then, and then go back and, and then check out Meisner, check out Chekhov, check out fucking method, check out everything you want, you know, d yeah. dabble around. Right. Yeah, um, there's a little technique that I've like the best actors, I think take bits and pieces from, from all the, the schools of, of acting. I think until totally you find something that works, but uh, something that I've been, Doing from for the last couple of years, I taught taught an acting class over at Halo Cinematic and kind of discovered this uh, doing a scene. Uh, like I'll have the actors uh, do it myself. Uh, you know, like a statement, like one statement, like what what's one sentence or one question that sums up what I really want in the scene. So we'll do the scene and read with the other person, and I'll have them do each not after every line, but every chunk of lines. Uh, say that sentence. So if it's like. I remember I did I had a uh, couple actors, Tom Mullion and uh, Lizette uh, Benray, uh, two local actors, were doing a scene from Heat, the Pacino De Niro scene in Heat, and uh, I asked them what the, what that question would be. So they're doing the scene, and uh, Tom Tom's line is, uh, "I want to." I think he's playing the Pacino role. He's like, "I want to fuck you, and I'm going to arrest you," and then De Niro's like, or uh, she's playing the De Niro role, and she's like, uh, "I want to fuck you." And then I'm going to kill you. And so they did this scene, and they would they would say that line after each of their lines. So he would be like, uh, uh, I don't know what the, the lines are. Like um, uh, you're looking over your shoulder. You better uh, look behind you because I'll be there. Okay. Fuck you, and then I'm going to kill you. So they would do uh, that after, after every line, and it was like the this most like this this scene was like this sexual intensity, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, oh. you just did something completely. The blew my mind. It was completely different than what you know De Niro did, but I love that finding that one sentence when you're rehearsing and practicing it. Because then you, I mean, obviously there's there's in each scene there's micro uh, beats that you want to you know sometimes you change tactics or you change what you want in a scene. But for the most part, that one prime directive and that scene what you want is is what's there. So if you can find that sentence and be thinking about that sentence when you're saying these lines, it, it like puts you in the zone. So that's been working for me lately. That's uh, nice. A little trick that I kind of come up with lately. I got a couple of things on that because I know that scene almost word for word. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, it's like uh, you know, there's a flip side to that coin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, this is something that I talk about a little bit because they always say De Niro versus Pacino. That was the first time they were up against each other. When I say up against each other, they're collaborating, obviously, but they're they're acting with each other in a scene. Just kind of make jokes about me and you going up and going into the ring. But the reality is that somebody can you not hear me? Oh no no, no. yeah yeah go ahead no. Um, but the reality is that that a lot of 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 how people perceive that maybe De Niro 
kind of come, came out on top in that scene yeah. is the way that it's edited. Because the last two shots of that scene, first they cut to De Niro and he's like, mm -hmm. you know, and then the la and then they cut to Pacino and he's like, mm -hmm. but then he smiles at the end. He goes, you know, he like lets it go a little bit. And I think that if the editor cuts like five frames earlier. You know, and they're both sort of ambiguous and like because I think Pacino sort of lets off a little bit, lets a little bit off the pedal though. The at the end, he just yeah. he just lets off the pedal just a little bit. Um, and no, I think the there's a flip side to that. There's a flip side. There's a flip side to that coin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I do what I do. I take down stores. You do what you do. You, you stop guys like me. You know. Yeah. Um. Um. Uh, but but I think it's it's it, it the editor <laughs> plays a big role in 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 how your performance is perceived because in some cases it's not a true take of your performance in that scene. It's a compilation of, of different bits and pieces. As you can see from my scene and yours, that's not all from, that's not all from one single take. That's, right. you know, if we take, if you watch one single take of that entire scene, you're probably going to get a different feel from, from, from the end of that. And the last thing I want to say about that is that Brian, shout out Brian, the oxen Higginbotham, um, my co-creator of Two in Burrito and my writing partner, he actually wrote an homage to that scene in our next feature called Tall Can um, that we haven't, that, that's in pre-production right now, that is actually a word count per word count mm, really? copy of the same scene between De Niro and Pacino, between two lead female actors in this case. Wow, cool. So it's, it's a it's a diner conversation between two actors and they're going word count for word count uh, in the same sort of uh, pace that the De Niro and Pacino scene from Heat is. Wow. Which, which when, when Brian told me about it, I was like, he's like, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm like, yes, please. Wow, that's rad. Can't wait to see that. <laughs> What turned you on more, acting with Gary Oldman or Nicole Aniston? <laughs> uh, I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> Murder in the fifth. <laughs> I, just, I had to sneak that one in. To, I had to sneak, I had to sneak that one in, Randy. Um, what's, who's your favorite Bond? Oh, my favorite Bond? Mm -hmm. I grew, I, you know, as I've gotten older, uh, I'd have to say Connery, but I grew up with with Roger Moore. That's that's that was my bond. But um, uh, Daniel Craig's good, but uh, he kind of turned me off when he goes, oh, "I'd rather slice my wrist and play another Bond." I'm like, "Fuck you!" Yeah, for fifty million, million. they're like, oh. they're like, for fifty million dollars, you're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> yeah. sorry, I think I can buy my Connery. I think I, I think I, I think I direct a Ted Nugent script for fifty million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then finally, the last uh, bracket bit of the evening, because we've been on for over two hours. Randy right. Davidson, you've been a fucking beast. You continue to be a beast. I appreciate you as a friend. I appreciate the passion that you bring to acting. Um, I think that you are one of these people that's a lifer, not a fucking hobbyist. And I think that, that that's kind of what's carried you to the success that you've had so far and what's going to carry you to more success in your career. And uh, I think being able to be in a Lee Daniels and fucking David Fincher film in the same fucking year is pretty fucking terrific, even for 2020. Um, and so, you know, I want to wish you the best of luck with that, my friend. Thanks, brother. That being said, the final bracket of the night is all-time greatest Randys. All right? All right. So I'm going to give you two Randys. You tell me who moves on, all right? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. First bracket. This is a short one because there's not that many famous Randys. You know? Randy Jackson. <laughs> Randy Macho Man Savage. Okay. Or Randy Johnson, pitcher, six foot ten, the unit, bird killer. Mm. Got, oh yeah, gotta go with Macho Man. Gotta go with the Macho Man. Randy Jackson or Randy Marsh from South Park. Oh. Thought this was America. Yeah, dog, I got to go with Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson, that's a no from me on that one, Mr. Randy Marsh. All right. How about Randy Travis mm. or adult film star Randy <laughs> West? Uh, um, well, I guess, uh, I guess so. Boy, you're not, you're not, you're scraping the barrel of Randy's, aren't you? Yeah, 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 you know. Um, 
Who just said Randy Jackson, the pitcher? No, Randy Travis. Oh, Randy Travis. Randy Travis or Randy West? Uh, um, let's go with Randy Travis. Randy Travis, keep it a PG. I like that. All right, and th- this is uh, this is a four, a four, a four. You got to pick one of these four, okay? okay? We did we did scrape the barrel. We got Randy Moss, okay, Minnesota Vikings fan. We got Randy Orton, wrestler, okay. We got we got Randy Quaid. Oh, huh? yeah. I already already then, Randy Moss, but now you're throwing Quaid into the mix. And then Randy Taylor, fictional child from the TV show uh, Tool Time, I believe, or whatever that one. That um, so really, it's Randy Moss versus Randy Quaid. Unless, unless Randy Orton is, is kind of your thing. Uh, Randy Moss is a legend, but I got to go with the actor. Let's go with Quaid. Randy Quaid. All yeah. right. And the, sem- the semifinals, Randy Travis, musician, Randy Macho Man Savage. Uh, Macho Man. And then Randy Jackson Dog versus Randy Quaid. Quaid. All right. And then in the finals, oh, yeah. Randy oh, Quaid yeah. versus Macho Man Randy Savage. Uh, I'm gonna have to say uh, this is some good bed pudding. It's uh, it's extra runny today. I'm gonna have to go with uh, doesn't Eddie? Randy, All right. Randy Quaid. Mr. Quaid. Mr. Quaid wins in a landslide against Randy Macho Man Savage. Was the belt <laughs> fixed? We'll never know. It's wrestling. Uh, but uh, you can watch Mr. Randy Davison. Don't call him GD. He doesn't like that name. We'll come up with a better nickname for him. We'll do it. Don't worry. I'll get you one. How about Randy the Mac Davison? No, no. <laughs> because of the <laughs> Mac Davison. All right. Randy, go. Um, so is you're, you're currently you're acting, right? Are you doing commercials? Mm-hmm. You're doing stuff like that so people can look yeah, for you on right. IMDb or where, do, where can people find you? Uh, yeah, you can find me on IMDb, uh, Twitter, uh, Randy Davison. Uh, I believe Randy Davison won <laughs> the number one because I'm just like, guess there's another one who is a farmer. Another guy. <laughs> I'm not. So I beat me to it. And, uh, Instagram, just Randy Davison uh, is my hat. My find me on Facebook. Uh, keep an eye out for Mank. It's supposed to be out in October, tentatively. Uh, uh, Billy Holiday versus United States versus Billy Holiday. Release date September tw- or September. What is September? February twenty first. Um, uh, audition for uh, Grey's Anatomy yesterday. So cross your fingers for me. Don't say good luck. Break leg. Um, that's that's it for now. All right, well, thanks for coming on the show, brother. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, man, it was fun. Yeah, fun. Cool. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, this has been another fireside chat with Big Chief Burrito. Make sure you leave a like. Make sure you follow us across all platforms. Thank you, Randy Davison, for coming on the show. Uh, appreciate you as always. And this is Big Chief Burrito, and we are out. If I can find the button that says I'm done. <laughs> All right, man. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> later, dude. Later. All right, guys. Thank you for watching the stream. Um, as always, I appreciate everybody that 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 watch, whether you watch for a minute or you watch for the entire two hours and twelve minutes. Um, you know, thanks for for leaving likes to help with the algorithm. Thank you for everybody that's already followed Twin Burrito on Twitch, on Facebook, on YouTube. Let me know. Um, if you like these types of interviews with actors, like I said, I have a lot of other stuff coming up where we're branching out into, well, like I said, if you look at our YouTube channel, I interviewed an ex-skinhead uh, and we talked about race relations and hate in the U.S., so go check that out. It's on YouTube right now. Um, I've talked to people about you know motivational speaking, about meditation. Um, we're talking to somebody about sustainable living in the next couple of weeks. Chef Jen is going to come on and talk about cooking with cannabis and just cooking in general during um, the pandemic. We had Dr. Jen from In the Den with Dr. Jen. We talked sex positive, uh, sex norms, all a bunch of good stuff. So there is a lot of different topics that we'll be talking about, not necessarily only acting, but obviously I'm a filmmaker, so I'm gonna gravitate to that. So leave a comment, leave a note, let me know what's up, inbox me. Let me know if you think that you know somebody that might be interesting for me to interview. Are you that person? I don't know, maybe, we'll see. But um, again, Thank you for watching. Big Chief Burrito.